I'm the Director of Operations with San Mateo County Harbor District, and we've got um, Rebecca McCoy, who's the Planner Analyst, here today. Anita is our Financial Services Director, and you probably all know Joan Draper. Um, we've also got uh, Neil Nichols with Moffitt and Nickel, uh, and uh, Neil's going to be giving us a little uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, little overview of our proposed plans for HDOC. We appreciate everybody coming tonight. We, uh, uh, the reason for the meeting is uh, as a community stakeholder and a, uh, workshop so that we can get feedback and ideas from everyone um, as we move forward with proposed plans. Uh, we anticipate having at least one more of these plans as well, or of these uh, public workshop meetings as well. Uh, it had been, uh, this meeting had been planned as a, uh, a public workshop intention just to get your public input, not to have any um, decision making done tonight. Um, so again, we appreciate everybody uh, coming. With that, I'd like to introduce Neil here. And Neil's going to kind of go over the, uh, the overall plan and the more detail with uh, HDOC, which we'll be replacing first. There is, uh, you know, in our uh, master plan, we do intend on replacing all of the docks uh, in phases, starting here with H doc. Go ahead, Neil. All right. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, again, Neil Nichols. I'm the project manager with Moffitt and Nichol, and we've worked with the district over the years, a number of different things at the at the marina. Uh, so I'm just going to jump in. Um, you know, I'm going to go pretty quickly. I have 10 slides, so I just want to get through the slides, give you guys an overview, um, and then we can get to questions, which is probably where we want to spend uh, more time on it. So anyway, uh, with Doc H, you can see it there with a 30-year-old timber commercial dock. It's a pretty good candidate for, for replacement. Uh, like what John said, when we started to design the district assets to look at the the whole marina, because we don't want to just design dock H's replacement without thinking about, well, the next docks that get replaced. You know, we want them to all work together um, as a whole. So we looked at the whole thing, we're calling it a master plan. You know, you can call it that, it's, it's not, that's not uh, inaccurate. Um, just to see all, both the commercial and the recreational side. Don't want to spend too much time on this, but want to zoom into um, H dock itself. So this is a couple months. Old. This is our first cut at the, the approach, you could say. Uh, we got the green ones, 50, 50 foot long, cyan colors are 55s, and the blues are 65s. Uh, so this is the current, the current design here. Um, not a lot has changed. You can see some of the more important things are uh, over here on the right side, we're extending the dock about 200 feet, a little bit more than 200 feet out toward the east. Um, it's just open water right now. Uh, we're reorienting the gangway. It is currently a perpendicular Johnson Pier, but we're going to go a little bit more parallel. It's not exactly parallel. It's, it's, we're turning it a couple of degrees, so about four degrees. So the goal of that is just to make it land on that float, kind of in the middle of the float, so we don't cause it to, to, to tilt too much. Um, we have to move the float a little bit away from Johnson Pier because there's batter piles there, so we don't want it to hit the, the batter piles. Um, you can see all the 50 footers are on the north side. Um, actually, I'm going to go back. What you can see here is there's those uh, XWs. It's the front of So the, all these XWs here and there are all extra wide. So we're doing double berths throughout, pretty much what you have now. And we have what we're saying standard double berth widths, and then we have some of these double berths that are extra wide. Uh, just to give a little bit more flexibility to the vessels that can go in. So here is, I'm not saying X, XW, these are the, the extra wide, four, four of those there, this one right here, and this one right here is, is called extra wide double bar. Uh, main so, walk. So what's the width of the old ones? Versus, the new ones are 38 feet wide? Uh, I'll show you in a sec, yeah. So the main walk is a standard eight foot wide main walk. We got, we got four foot fingers on the 50s, four foot fingers on the 55s, and five footers for the 65s. And just to say, just to show you the, the extra 200 feet there, we're getting 19 more uh, vessels in. 
Um, ten of those are for 50s, five more 55s, and four more 65s. I'm not counting the end ties because we already have end ties, so they're just essentially just moving the end ties out. Hey, quick question. On the, uh, from the end of the dock to the, the break wall, water, was it, did it say on the last slide, was 97 feet? Yes. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of a backing out distance, you know, so a vessel can back out. You, you want to have 1.75 times the vessel length. Same as uh, the 88 feet but there. As it is now, it's coming out 200 feet, and it will end up 97, about 97. Correct, feet. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Over 97. Is it yeah, 97 is the target. Okay. So you got you got a little bit more, and uh, this line here is a 50-foot offset from the center line of the breakwater. Okay. And then the other one is a 75 foot offset from this one. So that's the, that's the, um, the main channel for, for going just in and out. So I, again, it's kind of funny because you're, this is, <laughs> this is dot G as we envision it being extended out. So right now it's, you know, it ends right in here. So this is future, you'd have to go all the way around. Alright, so again, the, the double berths, this is probably important to the, the users. Um, wanted to compare it to DBA's uh, standard minimum. So you're taking the single berth width and doubling it. For a 50 footer, the minimum is 34. Right now, we have 36. And so we want to at least keep what we have. So all the standard double berth 50s are 30, 36 feet, and then we got those extra eight slips, the, the four double berths are going to all be 38 feet wide, so you get a couple extra feet. And then the 50s, uh, you know, we're a little bit more than the minimum, we're at 38 foot, uh, but the, the, that double berth extra wide is four feet wider. And the same thing for the, the 65, we're, we're, you know, quite a bit wider than the minimum, uh, and then we got one extra wide that's, again, four feet wider than the, the standard of all the 65s. And you can see the breakdown of, of, of which slips get what. All right, what we envision or what we're planning on doing is going with concrete as opposed to timber or steel or aluminum or fiberglass. So it's going to be a, a concrete uh, dock. There's typically two types. We have the uh, uni float here on the left. Um, these photos, at least I think this one is from Oyster Point. It's recently done at Dock uh, 8 and 11 at Oyster Point. The other option is uh, this Kikan or IMF style. They're, they're subtly different. This one is fully encapsulating. Uh, and this one is not fully encapsulating. It's just the, the top and the, and the sides. And they cover the bottom with um, the flotation on the bottom is covered with plastic. So those are the two options. I uh, wanted to show a little picture of what's existing now on the left. Uh, you can see the uh, pedestals are typically in the knee braces, guide piles are in some of the knee braces, and a few dock boxes here and there. You got your uh, fire hose cabinet there, a bunch of them kind of in the, in the main wall. Um, just for comparison, we want we wanted to go a different route. We want to give every vessel a triangular dock box. So everybody's going to have a dock box. So pretty much every knee is going to get a box. So that means we can't put a, uh, a pile or a pedestal. So what we're going to do is put the guide piles. This is an example. This is uh, from, I think, West Marina. So we're going to put the guide piles uh, off the main walk into the, in the middle of the double berth between the vessels. Um, this one we're showing in each double berth. Ours are going to be every other, only on the north side. So the 50s. Every other 50 will have a guide pile. Um, you can also see the pedestals are in the middle, roughly in the middle of each berth. And that pedestal services those two vessels, the two vessels of the double berth. And why are you changing that? Just to make it a standard for everybody gets a dock box. And, and no, I'm not talking about the pedestals. Why, oh, because you can't put them in the knee brace anymore. Oh. Uh because -huh. the knee but brace will have a dock box on it. This is a lot different for running cords to the power plant. Huh? Yeah, the cords will go directly to the vessel, not on the fingers, most likely. And and if you want to, you could probably run a cord all the way down the finger if you, if if you want. If you want to buy enough cord. Yeah. yeah. 
And it, in some ways, it's, it's nice to not have something tripping you. But yeah, this way it'll be, uh, your vessel will go straight onto the main walk, the cord will go toward the main walk, most likely. Uh, in addition, if it's, you know, if the uh, actual lick pedestal is where the dock boxes are, then the electric cords, you know, there's not going to be one pedestal for each vessel. You know, that's not done We anywhere. have two, two vessels. Yeah. yeah, one pedestal for two vessels. Right. Yeah. Therefore, one of the cords have to be going, if you have them at the, uh, you know, actually at the place where the dock boxes are, then one cord has to be currently going across a walkway. So what you're thinking by putting the pedestal there, that there will not be cords going down the dock? They just run right along the dock. It won't be crossing they across a yeah. dock okay. or a finger pier. Yeah. That's the same thing at San Francisco Marina, for instance. Um, if you go look at most marinas, this is the, the common design. Yeah. It's the electrical and the hose also. If you, need, you know, drag a hose across this way, the hose. The, uh, this is also going to kind of address that. So here's more of a zoom into where what we plan for the pedestals. So the pedestal there is next to the guide pile. It might be off to the side, but it might work right there. The pedestal is mid berth, that's, so there'll be power coming to this vessel, power going to this vessel, and there'll be a, a hose bib for each vessel also. So there'll be double hose bibs coming out of the pedestal. And so that little piece of angle iron underneath the top of the pedestal, is that supposed to be holding the hose? Right where you this, plug, yeah, the, yeah. Right where you is, plug in the wires? Yeah, that's for the... Uh, that's either for your cord or your hose. That doesn't look like it's big enough for both. I agree. You know, no, I mean, generally, like, generally that's a... Mixing water and electricity is not a very good idea. No, it's right. never a good idea. Let me say it just for a second. Sure. I don't want to interrupt it. Uh, this is a, a hose hanger. It's only a you know, freshwater hose hanger. Yeah. And the uh, electric cord is generally, people run them right along the dock and down their finger pier right along the dock and down their finger pier, or they coil it up on the ground here and then put it over the bow as they bow in. So, but when we're out at sea, you got both your hose and your electrical cord there. Sitting on the dock. Sitting on the dock for well, people to kick in water. Right. Because that hook's not going to be big enough to put both on. Right. No, we wouldn't, we wouldn't suggest at all that we have an um, electric cord on the hose hanger here. That is a, that is a water hose hanger. That's what it's designed for. There's the electrical hanger. There's a plug. Yeah, you got the plug there, where are you gonna put your electric cord? What? Maybe in the duck box. Again, <laughs> at, at all marinas, you know, they generally people will have their um, electric line strung out if they're you know strung out along the finger pier, along the edge of the finger pier, right. and leave it there. Right. If if you're gonna run it across from the bow and then want to roll it up here somewhere, it'd be easier just to how much to traffic do you have going down the finger pier? Disconnect it and bring it with you. Pardon? Yeah. How much traffic do you have going down the finger pier versus how much traffic going down the main pier? Yeah, the main pier would have more traffic. Correct. Yeah. Now we're putting the hose and we're putting the electrical there. Well, again, hose is uh, on the hose hanger, so I it's not you're a... you're telling me that I put 75 feet of hose on that? That's not going to work. That's what it's designed for. 75 feet of hose? Yeah, 100 feet of hose. 100 feet. Yeah. I don't see it. Yeah. 100 feet of hose, yeah, three my, feet again, high, my, is not that. Uh, I get back to my question: Where, where, where do you, where, where are you going to put your electrical cord hanging on that? You don't hang an electrical cord on the electric pedestal. We do. We do. But we're yeah. in the, the harbor. Okay. Yeah. I don't right. have enough room to store all that on my boat. Right. I have a smaller boat. So most people store it in the finger pier. Okay. Well, this is again what we want to hear from you guys, and we appreciate your input. All right. But um, let me just. I'm just saying what is normally done, and. Normally, what is done is people will, you know, hook to the hook their electric cord to the pe to the pedestal, then run it along the the main dock and down the finger. Um, you know, especially if you're bowed in, you know, your uh, 50, 60 foot, 80 foot electric cord um, doesn't go to your bow. I don't know any um, electric hookup for a boat that's on the bow. Maybe yours is, but most of them are midship or aft of midship. 
I see a lot more chance of somebody tripping over that on the main part of the dock because a cord doesn't go nice and straight along the docks, along yeah. the piers. It's going to wiggle, waggle, it's going to go up. That's that's it's, accurate. It's, it's, a it's a trip and, hazard, too. Yeah, unless there's well, a channel for it to go under something I, I, like that. You know, I, I agree with you. You are accurate. There is, I don't think there is a perfect solution, and we appreciate your feedback, and that's what we're here for. It's, your, it's going to be your guys' marina. Um, again, this is more what is most common at other facilities at present. All right, and um, again, the width of the lighthouse pedestal, you know, is almost 14 inches wide. Then it's offset from the end of the dock or from the edge of the dock. So for that wiggle, you know, along the side of the or the edge of the main dock, there is room for it to be laying there. But would you have people walking in both directions? We have a lot of our customers who yeah. have. Uh, old fart carts and and you have uh, other things that are be going along. Yeah, that that's a trip hazard to have cords laying across the dock like that. Well, it's not going again, not going across even if, the even dock. Even if it's parallel. Yeah, the, you're, you're still going to parallel. Have people walking side by side, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're well, going to have is, their equipment. That's that. Yeah. that that's a trip hazard. This drawing's um, not. I got to say, not to scale. I, I understand yeah. it's not to scale, yeah. but I'm saying that that's a trip hazard that should not be laying on the dock. Okay. So your suggestion is, so I'm clear, your suggestion is... Um, That's not the right location. Okay. All right. So let's talk about that for a minute so we can uh, uh, give, you, give other alternatives next time when we come together. All right? So again, we're not the enemy. We're, I'm just trying to say, if you, look at, if you go to the other marinas, this is the, the majority of the layout. Why, why is the desire there to relocate from where they are now? To give you the dock boxes. Well, let's talk about it, and you guys explain to me. Um, so, let's say that we don't give dock boxes, okay. and let's just say that we put them. And again, we don't have to have dock boxes. It's you know, this was uh, kind of my idea. I got to say that we we go by what I've experienced over in uh, in other places uh, around the world, including as close as San, San, San Francisco Marine. How many dock boxes do we have on the dock today? Not many. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, again, it's your guys, Marina. But let's talk about it for a minute, because if we put, if we eliminate dock boxes, right. you know, which obviously most facilities don't don't want to spend more money. So, uh, but but in our instance, since we're uh, you know a harbor, a public harbor district, um, uh, I'm not saying money's not the option, but given given our customers, our tenants, our current long-term tenants, that is the our goal. Given you guys what you need to, to operate and to enjoy the facility. Anyway, so let's just say that we were to eliminate dock boxes and put electric pedestals here. That I'm assuming you're saying this electric pedestal will serve as this boat and this boat. Is that right? It's kind of what we're doing now. It's it's not, no. Okay. Yeah. And I know I know how it is there. I'm just trying to you know obviously we're building a new facility, so I'm just trying to to get what you're thinking will go forward with. So the electric pedestal here would service this boat and this boat. So then obviously this cord going to this boat would be crossing the finger pier while it's in use, I guess. But you're saying that when it's not in use, when you guys are out, you'd be um, coiling it up and laying it on <laughs> this or near the electric pedestal or over on this side? Use, use the using the hooks pedestal. that are on the side of the pedestals. Yeah. Yeah, folks on pedestals already. We use those for our cords. Okay, and where do you um, currently? What's your suggestion for the water? We as what's existing now is where the water comes up on the other um, uh, little finger. Um, is uh, we stick it there, we coil our hoses, and then we take them down right there. Okay, so water separate from the yes. electric pedestals. Yes. And and I remember cars, but it's still right. Well, well I remember seeing that some places yeah. where no, there's no, just no. little spigots coming out no, of the no. bottom. No. I, mean, uh, I see that as a hazard having both water and electricity there because not everybody is going to have a nice new hose that doesn't leak. Yeah. A lot of them squirt all over the place and you're going to be squirting right up at that plug. I mean, that, to me, right. that's, that's, a, that's a major hazard. Okay, well, I can, I can say that, um, that uh, it is safe. It has been determined to be safe and it's not nationwide been a problem. Or I can say worldwide been a problem, but I do see your, I do understand your concerns that um, you know that that might be, um, you know might be something that someone would be concerned with if not 
uh, you know, had the experience of using these type pedestals. But they are, like these are, these for instance are the, uh, the Eaton Lighthouse Pedestal, which are arguably the largest manufacturer in the world, um, or at least in the continent of the United States, you know, service continent of the United States. Um, there are some I've been experienced with overseas that are uh, maybe as big, but Eaton's a very large manufacturer for electric pedestals. And they do have the compartments for the water lines coming up into the pedestal, to the bottom of the pedestal, completely closed off and separate. So well, I, a, a I, water I'm break. Sure the pedestal is made yeah. to conform to codes. Yeah. Uh, what my point is is that there are going to be users that hook the hose up. They don't tighten it all the way down. You've got water squirting all over the place. Water's going to squirt right up into that plug. So you've got a major electrical water hazard right there. I, I, it's okay. not a good design to me, but that's me. Okay. Well, I understand your concerns and I appreciate you voicing them. I can, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I'm just one person, but I can tell you that, you know, if you go to other facilities and ask someone, you know, hey, if, what kind of issues have you had? Have you had some, uh, you know, some shorts, you know, some breakers popping because water spraying up at them? I've never experienced it myself. So I think it, I do believe that it's, uh, it may be a, an issue, but I don't think it's a, a big issue. I would be, um, and, and be more in agreement with you guys about the, uh, you know, the, uh, potential for uh, what you want to do with your electric cords. You know, it, I think that's a, that is a legitimate thing. Um, and a lot of times I've seen, you know, with configurations like this, where people do not um, actually um, run their cords um, down the main dock and then down the finger to midship or aft of midship where the electrical um, connection is on the boat itself and then just coil it up there when they leave. Um, when they don't do that, I have seen electric cords coiled up here. And again, this isn't to scale, but even a you know, 50 amp electric cord, 100 foot of 50 amp electric cord coiled up here um, doesn't protrude largely into the actual walkway of an eight foot gangway. But you've got people walking both directions mm -hmm. and without that some way to secure that cord, it could get kicked into the water. Right. Maybe it'll turn it off. Um, what, if, what about looking at you know, if you want to leave a pedestal there, if you could get one without the water connections and just put water connections right next to the dock box. You can put a hanger on the dock box for your water cord. That you might hang sense. your power cord. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. There are dock boxes with hoses and water utilities and dock boxes. Yeah, and I've I've actually experienced that before at facilities, and I got to say I would stay away from that. Um, and the reason I wouldn't suggest putting the um, and again those are right next to each other again, the water and the electric right next to each other in the dock box. It's just um, no matter how good a monitor I'm catching myself, I, um, and I bump things. No matter how good you are, eventually boats end up um, bumping dock boxes. Um, so. When you've got your plumbing, the electrical and water going into a dock box, and then it gets smacked, um, damaged, it's a big deal. If we, uh, you know, have just the dock box to replace, that's much easier. If we have to replace an electric pedestal by itself, a component of the electric pedestal, that's not as big a deal either. So I guess I would just suggest we stay away from the combined dock boxes and electric pedestals. Um, I, uh, I agree with that. Yeah. Your, your I point agree with that. A, having a stub up, that was another one that, that one of our senior guys was saying, you don't want to have a separate water coming up because they get kicked, they get, the, the water lines come up straight to the dock. We could do that though. But it's done, yeah, it's done. Yeah, we've had it like that, we're used to it, so. Yeah, we could. Nobody wants to change the problem. Yeah, yeah. but we could, we could do that. I think that's something legitimately that we could look at is, um, is moving the electric pedestals to here and then on this side, having the, uh, the hose bibs come up with hose hangers to where they're taller. Is that, would that be, uh, I'm saying that that's, if they're- That's pretty much what we have If, if they're real low, like some of them are real low, you know, just the hose bibs poking up out of the, the dock itself. And those could be, a, that could be a trip hazard and stuff. Um, well, see, that was my concern is we have 
kind of for whatever fisheries we're in, we have a lot more traveling boats in the harbor than, than a lot of other harbors. A lot of the harbors are just the same guys, and we yeah. have boats from all over the place. And we get a lot of people walking on the dock with the off-the-boat sails and stuff. So yeah. anything that we can build to open up in free areas, I think, is a wise move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, we want to, you know, the reason we're here is to honestly get your guys' input and figure out um, what way we want to move forward. Um, I would encourage you guys, before the next meeting, I'm going to be looking at other options to present for the next meeting. But I would ask that you guys also maybe just take a trip over to some of the other marinas and look at the configurations that they've got. You know, I, uh, again, I don't want to toot my horn, but I've managed marinas around the world. And I just got to say that when I go to marinas that are laid out like this, I don't see a trip hazard. And if, if you... Uh, if you go, for instance, to one of the other facilities around, you know, newer facility. So does that marina have a lot of transient boats? Does that marina have a lot of foot tra traffic with off-the-boat sales? I'm not, I'm not talking about any specific marina right now. I'm talking about marinas in general. And I don't want to say any specific one because every marina that I manage, i got to say, um, um, has different um, characteristics. Um, so so I, I have a general question. Maybe this is more directed towards you is why are we starting on H stop? Why are we the guinea pig? Why not start on, on, on uh, love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? Um, it, it's because honestly, the, the bigger boats are getting wider. Yep. We don't have room for them. You know, uh, or he can't type in regular slip. The it, Ocean Angel. Uh, Pacific Bully. It's a 50 foot boat that's 26 foot wide. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand, John, but my, my point is, is why, why, are we, why are we starting with H dot? Are, are you eventually going to do all the, all the, yes. Yes? yes. Then why start with H dot as, as your first? That's the first dog that makes the most work. I can, I can answer that too in discussion, in discussion with John. And again, this isn't nailed down. You know, it, it actually surprises me that someone would say, why are you starting with my dock? You know, um, if anything, it was, I've heard, why aren't you starting with my dock? You know, someone else asking. You know, everybody wants, everybody I've talked to wants, to wants us to start with their dock. But when trying to choose and be fair you know, and, and rational, H dock is where, even in the year and a half I've been here, we've had to do some major repairs from a Morse cable breaking and the dock um, literally getting crushed. Um, <laughs> my, my, I guess my point with that is yeah. that <laughs> and it's you, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from, from the process in each, uh, in each instance. So right. if you did one of the other docks, that would, you know, that would allow you to, to learn how this particular harbor is going to operate, okay. which is, because which is, every harbor is, is unique, yeah. um, it, would, it would give you a chance to learn before you go into uh, the, the, the heaviest, uh, probably the heaviest used dock of the harbor. All right, well, that's something that you we'll consider. Practice, okay. And then, and then, you know. That's something we'll that. consider. But I got to say that, um, you know, uh, we're not reinventing the wheel here. You know, there's, there's fishing docks, there's, there's a lot of marinas, a lot of harbors around the world. And, um, you know, the little, little things, if you will, um, are what we're, we're more discussing tonight, I think. And, um, you know, how H Doc wants the people on H Doc at present, how they want to guide our decisions may very well be how we go throughout the entire facility. Um, you know, we didn't make this mess, this meeting tonight only for H Doc, um, but we, we would, any marina would, plan to, to follow through with the entire facility in the same manner, not have one doc totally different than another. Um, and I wouldn't anticipate us changing dramatically, you know, if, we're, if we end up putting finger, or putting electric pedestals um, on the triangles, I would anticipate us continuing to do so throughout the entire facility. I'm just, you know, to me, like I said, it's just, it seems yeah. like, you know, you're gonna, there will be things that are learned from this that, that'll, that will then will be applied to the other ones. I was just, is it difficult to work on a pedestal where they are now, John? Um, it's not to work on them? Yeah. No. 
Now I'd say this. Now, like if here, here's it. another. I just thought of this. You know, while you guys were talking about the electrical and the trip hazards between the two green corners there. Right. 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 So underneath that, if you put an electrical pencil on the, the right one there. Okay. Run a four-inch PVC underneath the dock that you can put your dock line under, so that it's not a trip hazard, and then run it down. You know where the cleats are to your boat. That would be cool. How do you keep the water out of the four-inch PVC though? It, well, it's above. It's above the. It's right underneath the deck, right above the floats. Oh. Well, many of the uh, many of the docks do have. That would be something. Simple. You could use like a I French drain. Right. 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 French drain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just thought about it with you guys all the time. Yeah. PVC. A PVC pipe might be hard to, to thread through, but there are troughs. You know, in many of the dock manufacturers, there are actual troughs that run along the, the whole dock for the electric for the dock itself. Or just I don't, a little trough on the, uh, the tip of the pier. Uh, finger pier. There. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I don't think it yeah, would so be... Like have one plank that lifts up. Yeah, I don't think it would be up. unrealistic for us to, to try to have some sort of... It'd have to be hinged. Um, you know, there'd have to be some design to it, you know, to where people aren't... It's not going to be a trip hazard and people aren't going to lose the, the cover and that kind of thing. Um, I, I don't, just know there's been a... There's like... On the recreation docks, there's a couple of people that put the pipe underneath the dock mm -hmm. on their own. Oh, and cool. they strung their port through there so there wouldn't be a trip hazard. Mm -hmm. Will they put power in the fish sales dock too? Mm, that's later on down the road. We're talking about H dock. I know, I know, I'm just being fast curious. Because that's another, see, that's another issue with us on E dock is, is everybody's running cords out to over there. And so you got all kinds of cords at times, you know, and in the winter when the docks are slippery, it's kind of a pain. Well, that's the, the idea, is to keep the docks as clean as possible, Correct. and right. while, while still having two boats share one pedestal. Mm -hmm. I think it's realistic that we're going to have to have two boats share one pedestal. And uh, again, if you, if you go to some other facilities, I, I believe you'll see where people even uh, use, you know, people that want to leave their cords while they're gone, they even uh, use little clamps to screw them to the, uh, to the whaler to the wooden whaler you know on the outside of the concrete dock um, so you you know, could even permanently mount your cord on the outside of the rub rail uh, those are options that are currently being done that's all I can all I can say uh, anyway then let's let unless somebody else got something else right now um, we are we are taking notes and we will be responding to these questions and these concerns when we uh, meet again. So we appreciate all your input. Yes. Is all of the light on the walkway just from the pedestals? Yeah, the light on the, the docks are downward facing from the pedestals themselves. And it's uh, you know, downward facing um, um, low intensity LED lights that don't, um, don't distract boaters you know, as you're coming into your berth at night. I'm sorry, Neil. No, you guys are doing all the questions at the end, so we don't have anything at the end. I think it's probably better. Oh, have one more slide. There'll be some at the end, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, well, so this is uh, just to go over the electrical, what we're planning to do down here, is all the slips. Every single slip right now is planned to get a, a 30 and a 50. Really? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the current plan. Uh, the end ties, um, it's not on the sheet, but... There's one end tie, but we're gonna put two pedestals on that end tie. So whether you get two pedestals or one, um, there'll be a, one pedestal that has four receptacles, 30, 50, 50, 80, and then another pedestal with just the 30, 50. So it just kind of, you can tell me one big or two little. That, that's fine. That's a picture there of the, uh, and again, this is just uh, uh, our suggested, our proposed, electric pedestal of choice at present, just because it's uh, the most widely used, frankly. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you know, it's not terribly expensive, but it's, it's tried and proven. And it's uh, the, the Eaton Lighthouse Pedestal. You've probably all heard of Eaton yeah, okay. Fittings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a PVC housing. Anyway, in the, uh, in those, on each side, there's that little flap that comes up, and there'll be a 50 amp under there and a 30 amp. Are there any pictures available that show what happens when you put cords on those things? Again, those those are hose hangers. Well, I know. I'm yeah. just saying, is there a picture that shows a hose hanging on it? Just get an idea of 
I didn't, I, I didn't bring one, but if you if you yeah. want to look up pictures of that lighthouse, that's the there's they're used all over. The place. So all nice and pretty. I'm curious what it looked like. It's it's the lighthouse. Lighthouse. Without the, without could, the could you go back to that picture? Years. That's an older version of the lighthouse. It's not the current version, but um, see the metal hammers on ours. Yeah, I mean I can barely get my electrical cord on. Right. Could you go back to the other picture real quick? So. Are you saying that there will be a 50 amp and a 30 amp for each boat? Each mm -hmm. So there will actually be two flaps, one on each side of the pedestal? Yeah, yeah. flap on that side and flap on this side. So, okay. yeah. so if you need 50 amp service, it's there for you. If you only need the 30 amp service, you can just plug in service. whatever you need. Or if you want to run 220, you can run a 30 and a 50 and with a splitter. And oh, they'll be separate? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, so you can run a welder. One or each one cord. Yeah. Uh, cool. Is that possible? Is what possible? Is that yeah, lockable? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think we have it locked. It's the same ones we have. This, this is the upgraded model with the hose bit, and instead of the metal ones, the hooks, we just have the built in molded uh, whatever plastic. PVC, whatever. yeah. It's PVC coated. It's stuff. PVC. Yeah. In addition, a lot of marinas actually uh, turn the pedestal as well to where the hose hanger, one hose hanger, is off over the water. Um, and then you've got one that's even more, it is more um, intruding on the, uh, you know, on the, the walk area. But this picture here on the bottom right is, a, is more representative of the, you know, of the scale, you know, of how much room there is to walk. And again, it's not, uh, those look like Bellingham docks there, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they look good, right? New pools are not the same width as we have now. You know, I haven't measured the ones there. I'm not sure you guys are a full uh, eight foot wide. Eight I don't think that's eight, eight. but uh, yeah, I haven't measured that. Eight. This was the eight. one on the left or the one on the right? Well, that's yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't think she was just hitched out right here. Are we eight foot wide? So can we, can we I think you're real close to it. Yeah. yeah. So where where are you going to put your fire hoses? We're not putting fire hoses on there. We talked to the well, the next one here is fire. So. The fire uh, chief wanted to have two standpipes, two wet standpipes, so they're charged. Yeah, fire, um, fire hoses are, are just no longer used. You know, it, um, they were originally, or always, really the, the, uh, the marine uh, or marina patrons and staff to try to put out a fire very quickly. But a fire extinguisher does that adequately in, a, you know, in an emergency for a very small fire. But uh, the fire department, when they get there, they would never try to pull out or take the time to pull out, you know, one of those old um, hoses that are all crunched up in a dock box that may have 50 holes in them, or when you pull them out, they may fall apart. Um, you I know, never had that. Yeah, there have been there have been failures, I guess. I'm just saying, yeah, they, they just uh, they just aren't. John, John takes care of his hoses. We pull them out and use them for the fish, and they're fine. They you aren't. That? We pull your hoses out and use them when we release the fish, and your hoses are always yeah. fine. Yeah, well, we, um, they are fine, because we do go through every couple of years to replace them, yeah. but talking to the fire marshal, they would never use them. They probably would. Yeah. So yeah, they, would ask, they asked us to just put stand pipes, mm -hmm. yeah. I think. I, can I sent you the numbers, it was every, I want to say 500 feet? 500, yeah. 500, yeah. 500 yeah. feet from, between stand pipes, yeah. but they do request to put fire extinguisher boxes there still. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you grab the quickest, and they'll so, bring their own hose. And they'll bring their own hose. They're not going to use the inch and a half hose we got. They're going to use their hotel packs, which are two and a half inch hoses. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't want it, and they don't want to carry their three inch hose all the way down. To the <laughs> yeah. Right. So they got, they call them the hotel packs. Okay. Where they go into hotels, they fight fires or whatever. Right. I guess that's where it came from. Yeah. Um, but talking to the fire marshal and extensively, he said they do not want to see the fire boxes down there. They okay. want to see stand pipes. Okay. If you go down to ABC Dock, when we did those 12 years ago, 15 years ago, if you look down the main walkway, there's just sand pipes. I didn't know. There's that. no fire boxes down there. <coughs> so you're saying instead of that, then putting fire these fire extinguisher cabinets? That's uh, for every 75 feet. Every 75 well, feet. Well, every every 150. You don't want to. You can't travel more than 75 feet to a fire extinguisher. So if you put one every 150 feet or less, then wherever you are, you're you're within 75 feet of an extinguisher. So we got we got seven extinguishers. There's gonna be one there, one there, one. And they're just kind of spaced out. So they're not they're not 150 feet apart. So they're just gonna be one. At my at my finger. Oh yours. At mine. 
I'm already. But we got a really nice fire monitor on our boat now that shoots a heck of a lot of water. <laughs> it does. I saw you guys talking about it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So, so they requested one standpipe at the start. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that'll serve us a, a good distance. And then we're putting the second one about 500 feet away, about to the third point, and that's where the end of the fire line is. So this is a class one, it's the highest class for a, a fire standpipe. So it's a, it's a big pipe. It's going to be, I think, a four inch. Um, so if it's 500 feet apart, then you're 250 feet in the middle, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a National Fire Protection NFPA standards, but it really defaults to what the fire, local fire guy wants, and that's what he wants. Oh. He wants one no further than 500 feet apart and you want one at the head. Okay. So this works, yeah. you know. No. Yeah. It, so the distance from this one to like fighting one over here and the distance to one fighting one here are about the same. It works out pretty good. So then you would carry hoses at the harbor or would you just... We have hoses at the harbor. So instead of those big boxes with the hoses right. and an extinguisher, you go to this little guy with just an extinguisher. Cool. So this extinguisher <coughs> box? It's just um, an extinguisher cabinet, yeah. Uh, how big is that cabinet? Big enough to hold a 20 pounder as well. So, and that's going to be, um, you're going to have seven total apparently on the pier. Correct. Um, and locations. Yeah, there's one there, one there, one there, one there, 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 yeah. They're just spread out along the main wall. Do they have to be next to a finger? They can be anywhere, but I didn't want to put it someplace where I put it next to the dock box where you could hit it, yeah. where or someone coming in, you know, to get their mouse to canal or whatever. Or, uh, you know, during the middle of salmon season, I can't tell you how many fire glasses we have to replace because at two o'clock when the bar closes, <laughs> they go down there and they break every single piece of glass. Yeah. Now, where the standpipes go, that hasn't really been determined. Especially your dock. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a this is a, you know this is a standpipe in the in the knee. It could be in the knee, but I'm showing it more like right off uh, the tie into the field dock. And this one's more like in the middle. So it could be. I think a lot of times they like it off the main walk, not coming up through the main walk. So it's bolted onto the outside. That's just, that's what we've seen in a lot of shop drawings. They stick it on the outside. So this one is on the outside. It just happens to be in the knee. So, but that's what a, that's what similar to that is what we're looking. So my only concern is that that's right there on my finger, and uh, if, if, if I've got some, um, I've already, it, it, it takes out a lot of the space, is all, so I'm going to just lose the space in my finger, but that's my personal opinion. That's why I was asking if it could be mounted on the other side, where they have the long opening. It could be on either side. I just think, uh, you know, I picked the north side because it was, no, just look good. It's closer to you. Yeah. It's a lot, but I, it, I mean, the spacing I worked out better too. Plenty on the boat. You know, we got to put seven of them out there, and the spacing worked out nicer on the north than the south, just where the fingers fell. So, uh, I think this is my last slide. Just we're going to keep doing the same kind of cleats. Um, there's the proposed dock box that we might not have in our reading. Uh, external pie brackets, the ones that are mid berth. You know, the ones on the end of the fingers will probably be integrated into the finger, or maybe not. We haven't decide if we're going to require an external at the end of the finger or just have it come through the finger. Um, and what we're not showing here is, you know, the, the HDP rubber rail and possibly an edge bumper also on, on the outside of that one, since it's going to be, you know, in the berth. So, uh, yeah, we put a bumper bracket around any standpipes as well. That's it. That's all I got. Who was the so on the this end. is demolition. It's just showing what we're going to tear out. So, oh, so, so then, so that's the pier, and then you're going to build a new rampway from the upper right on the right picture. Yeah. So this is, you know, this a little shed there. This is at that little brow that comes right. down. So the brow comes out. Right. The concrete brow comes out. This portion of the timber comes out. Um, you know, the ice house obviously stays. Uh, so this comes out. But that's Keith's oil shed. That'll be going. Oh, too bad. It's going to have to go, yeah. Okay, because the that's dock where the gangway goes. That actually dock will be down yeah. at the water level. Then. Yeah, the gangway is going to be coming down this way. Gotcha. To a new floor. Yeah. And so it's going to yeah. be. Indeed. Yeah. Right. A lot of people buy oil from Keith, and that's where he keeps it. But we're also extending, you go back to the very 
front, uh, our very first picture as well. Uh, yeah, that one shows it. No, the, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can see we're extending Keats Dock out, so there's going to be substantial change there as well. We weren't really going to. We'll be talking more about more to Keats about what we're going to, uh, you know, suggest for fueling and yeah, yeah for and ice and stuff for his for his new dock and what right. he needs. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. we'll so in the extension of that, is that to, to put in more hoses, or are we still basically going to be stuck with one hose that works? Again, we'll have to talk. We'll be talking with Keith and with you guys more as we talk after we talk to Keith. You know, to figure out. Uh, we got two hoses that work. Yeah, your yeah your deck hose and, and uh, one fill hose. Yeah. <laughs> but by extending it straight instead of making it make that turn to the west, um, we're able to. Uh, Potentially later, um, for instance, we get this tiger grant we just applied for. Um, we may end up widening the end of Johnson Pier altogether. Um, in addition, extend, that way you leave the dock. That way you could just extend the pier. Exactly. In addition, we um, you know can have then two sides of that you know the same length of dock. Right. You know if it's turned like that, obviously you can't use really the the inside portion of that where it's up against Johnson Pier. Right. You know, with it going with straight the out. House. You mean with the ice house? Yes. Uh, no, at no. the end of the pier, they were talking about extending the pier. You know, we're extending the dock straight out instead of, you know, oh, dock yeah. lights. Yeah. Right so straight we, out. Straight out. Yeah, I can see that. I see the picture there. It's just we're very early on in, uh, in discussion about this, but we may end up um, moving John, or, you know, extending Johnson Pier out like this right. and potentially this way a little bit as well. Um, how are you going to get the boats out of the slips? Yeah. No, we of, of course always leave fairway. Again, uh, 1.75 of the length of the boat. But this That's right nice now. calculation. When the wind's blowing 25 knots. But again, like there is no, if you, if you look at the new design here, there is no slips backing up against there. These, yeah, are, these are long side ties. You got me? You're changing E dock to only be one side of E dock. No, yeah. that's an extra set. That's oh, you're putting a whole yeah, that's a whole new there? new set of berths. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And we're, we're, so you're going to put a whole new set of berths from E dock to the pier? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm not sure what your question is. You can see in the I, I tell you what you can see in the underlay. You can see where I, I see. D dock is now. Right. right. You can see where E dock is now. Right. E dock will be moved this way, and then no, you can't do that. E W will be here. You can't do that. The guys can't get out of E dock now, and make the left hand turn with 20 knots of wind and get out of the harbor now. And you're going to make that area smaller. You can't do that. Well, one, let's. Um, uh, you know, it's good that you're letting us know your your thoughts at present, but we're talking about H dock at present. This overall design is is way down the road. Okay. Okay. So and then back to my original statement. Yeah. Let's go back to the original one. Oh. Keep, keep where where just my my key curiosity. Where were you talking about not being able to both sides to get of out? E both sides of E dock where it is right now can't back out into this fairway. What, what do you or can't make this turn here? The other yeah. side of the dock between D and E, going out that channel, coming out this way. Mm -hmm. Yes. This turn here is difficult. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the slip is difficult. Because of the... The breeze down the slip, down, down the fairway. And, and that one, Jimmy, they're going to all Local smaller conditions. Slips. You're going to smaller slips? On that. So e, on my side where I am, you're going to smaller boats? Um, and then you, what does that say? Size? Those are 30s. Yeah, those are just 30s there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you'd probably move over to the other side of EDOP? Again, it's 1.75 the length of the boat um, in the fair. Yeah. And, and I know what it's like trying to get out of that channel. I've done this for a while. I've got you. I'm not down that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, so you can calculate all you want, but getting out of the channel, I know all about that. Okay, I got you. But again, it, it does change if the length of the boats that are there are 10 foot long. So, you know, Jim, small. looking at the color coding, right. the purple is all 30 foot. The red is 35. The, the so then you're moving the orange. Up. The orange, um, where it says extra wide, below is 40. 
So then you're moving E dock Those are further down, blocks. further down the road, down the dock, and you're only allowing one side to have finger slips and the other side their side ties? Yes. Well, it's not really E dock, it's a whole new dock. The this EW is a, was meant to be worked up. He didn't yeah. work. This is a whole new dock. Worked up. You know, the the uh, old E dock is. Um, well, you're taking this. It's going to be you're changing. Out, moved out. 30 and 35, so it looks like quite that. Wow. But again, you just when we might fish sails down the dock even further. When we get to you know when we'll we get to this when we get right. to this side, it'll be after multiple meetings on this dock and this dock. Because the plan at present, anyway, is for us to do H dock first, then G dock, then F dock, right. then attack the other docks. Yeah. So back to H dock here. Yes. I have a question for you, John. Where are we going to be? What's that? Where are we going to be? Yeah. Do you? Where, where are, you are you going to sign up? Where we learn this work? Where where do we put our boats and, and well, conduct our well, business? That's a. We're working on that. Yeah, now. that's another question that we wanted to, to talk to everybody today about. You know, obviously it's always there's a lot of challenges with any um, renovation like this. You know, uh, a rebuild of a dock. You know, and and you guys are again the the end users and we want to make we want to do what what you guys want. So it boils down to you know to make everybody that's using the marina. The harbor are happy um, and uh, efficient, you know, in their jobs. So you know, is, there, commercial fishermen. is there presently a problem with the uh, pilings uh, on H dock that are used in use now? No, but if we go to extra wide slips, which we need. Yeah, but all, could those extra wide slips be just the addition down the line? on the end of H dock and use the existing pilings and um, which I would think would save a hell of a lot of money. Well in this design, in this design at present, we're able to use, that was one of the things we tasked them off at Nickel with, is using some of the existing piles where they exist. And then we may also be able to pull some of those concrete piles and redrive them, the ones that are in good shape. So we'll be able to right now, you know, with this current design, be able to use some of the pilings that are still are there at present, but we will also potentially be able to use some of those uh, pilings that uh, that we have to relocate. Um, and just, so, they're, they're so you're understand. telling me there's a problem with some of the pilings now? Yeah. No, they're not. They're not damaged. They're just then, then why the spend the money to move them and leave the existing pilings? Just rebuild the docks and leave the pilings where they are. Put the finger piers in the main, and rebuild the finger piers in the main pier. Leave the leave the pilings alone. If you want to add extra wide bursts, put that down in your on your extension. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I understand. Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. The main reason is just they they don't last forever. I mean, this this thing, you know, the piles may not be deteriorating, but they will be. So if you're going to spend the money to, to redo your whole dock. That's the time to do your piles, and it's the, the layout will not work. We we can't save we can't save a lot of piles. There's, well, that'd be the that'd be the thing is yeah. just if we left all the piles exactly where they are, then um, are you suggesting that we just leave the finger piers at the same place, just replace everything? Just replace everything light? that's there. Leave the leave the uh, uh, the pilings there. Well, then it goes back to like John was saying that we aren't widening any bursts. But if you do that on the extension yeah. that you're putting out on the end, make all of those your wide bursts. Okay, so you're suggesting just leave everything as is, but, re but replace with new, and then also extend with wider bursts. Yeah, what, what you extend out the end, make those your wider bursts, mm -hmm. and, leave the, you know, and leave the existing the way it is. And to me, that would be a whole lot more economical. Well, John, is that the feedback you've been getting? I mean, it's I just haven't gotten, well, this yeah. is the first meeting, so okay. this is the first feedback I've gotten, so. Because again, it would just, um, you know, if, if everybody's content and, um, and happy with the current slip widths that are there now and want to replace I think that with light. Big, you know, more in the 65 footers, those need to be wide. You know, right now on a boat in Ventura, my boat is tiny down there. You know, there's yeah. a new class of boats that size are all. Yeah. Yeah. 23, 24, 25 foot wide vessels. Mm -hmm. well, it's like the Pacific Bull is yeah. 50 feet by 26. Yeah, yeah every new, in new vessel. In the extra wide burst, you're only, you're, we're only doing what, four feet? An extra four. So how many of these, That's not, in, in this, yeah. in this yeah. 
in your proposal, how many extra wide berths are you uh, looking to add? We got eight of the 50s. On, I'm 60s. talking about just on eight stop. Yeah, eight of the 50s, two of the 65s, and two of the 55s. Yeah. And if those were all, yeah. instead of changing them. Everywhere where there's numbers in here. Those are the okay, so if you, move, if you just moved, you've got on the greens, you've got them all down on the end. If you took the ones that are in the, the blues, the 65s, and put them down on the end, you don't have to change any of the pilings or anything on the inside. Well, yeah, I mean, before I, I, asked, I, I was asking you a question about the, the uh, um, condition of the concrete used uh, for these pilings. If there was any, any spalling and leaching of materials out of them, and apparently the, the answers that I was getting back from Jimmy was that there's no, there's no mm -hmm. deterioration of these pilings. Yeah, when I looked at them, I don't think they're in good shape. I mean, so really why, good shape. why waste a lot of money yeah. pulling pilings there's and no. putting them somewhere else if they're fine where they're at and you just build on to the end? Yeah, I mean, the simple question is, no, they're not fine where they're at. Because if you look at the layout, when you look at the whole thing, and if you look at minimums, the 1.75 minimums for in between docks, you got to start at the top. So F dock would have to go where it is. Well, and then G dock would have to go where it is to maintain that, <coughs> that spacing. And H dock has to go there. And that's not lining up with where H dock is right now. Plus the well, piles, you, on your overlay, it sure looks like it's right there. Well, aerial photos can be a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so and the other thing you're, is you're saying move, you're going to move the whole main dock into yeah. a different position than Slightly, what it yeah. is now. Slightly. Yeah. Further offshore. Yeah. So, How much? It, but the piles are also undersized for what we're we're planning. They're they're what like 14s, I think, and we're planning 16s. So you can do less. I think than we there. can look at that though. Yeah. We can look at that. You know, I just I see yeah. that as a tremendous waste of money. Yeah. So on the on each dock there on the green. First one next to the pier. Are you putting two boats in there? No, one. No, all the way down. Up, 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 up. There. Oh, here, there. Yeah, there's two. Two boats there? Yeah. You're not going to do that. You, you can't, can't do that. hardly. Dennis is in there now. He right. can barely make the turn, right. and he doesn't have. That's my finger pier. Right. That finger pier is only 40 foot. Right. If it was any longer than that, he would never be able to get into that right. berth. I'm 40 foot. I would not be able to get into but that. But you've got a double berth, so you're easy. No, I don't have a double. I have a double he finger. Has, has a a double finger. I have well, a double I'm, finger. I'm the first double. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's got, I have he's a double got a finger. finger. He decided to come up. And with the what conditions to, we have. You get a suddenly and you try to put your boat in that slip there, you're, you're going to be up against the pocket double board. Okay. And you're going to be in irons right away. Right. Hey, I, uh, in, in my case, I have a double finger on each side. Right. So and when I have weather, uh, because I'm a single screw, yeah. um, when I, if there's, you know, with the conditions we have, right. I need to have both those docks on both right. sides. Because sometimes the, the way there are local conditions, the way it blows down there, we really get into a, a, a tight bind right. down at that end. Dennis would never be able to fit no. in there. Okay, let me, let, me break in. let me break in real quick, because, you know, this isn't my first rodeo either. Okay. Now, uh, uh, one of the things that I was going to bring up tonight, actually, was your, your desires as far as center pilings, center guide pilings. But before I get into that, let me just say that um, not having a center guide piling, any, any center pilings, and the discussions about which slips are harder and easier to get into, and the discussion with whether or not um, you know, we're going to be able to accommodate the, some of the 26 or 24 foot beam boats, um, all of that um, can be worked out with our boat placement. You know, uh, obviously, if some areas are very difficult to get into, then we would be putting maybe um, a smaller boat in there um, or a wider vessel that can get in and out easily, maybe even some with a bow thruster. Then next to it, since we've got a wide boat in there, then we're just putting a very small vessel in there. So just because they're green doesn't so, mean they have to be 50 so, foot boats so in one there. Of the, one of the issues are with that argument yeah. is that Dennis doesn't want to give up his birth. Right. I don't want to give up my birth. I don't want to give up Guarantee my birth. Bob doesn't want to give up his it took birth. Me years to get That's further for our customers. We're, we're right. party boats. Yeah. That's further for our customers. You're going to be mixing up what, what we've worked for 
in okay. having births and visibility to the clientele and to the public. Okay, let me stop you right there because that's a very good point. And that's something that I've run into before where people, in fact, um, purchased their, boat, their births in, in effect. You know, where they bought a boat that was a piece of junk, but they paid a lot of money for it because they wanted their birth, mm -hmm. they wanted that birth <clears throat> in that spot. Um, so that's something we need to consider is keeping current vessels where they are. Um, and that's obviously something that would, uh, you know, with the current design changes, um, and I've run into this at other facilities where in a new design for a whole marina, often the area where um, we're now planning to put um, a, a 50 or 60 foot berth used to be a 30 foot berth. Obviously that person that has that small 30 foot boat can no longer go into that 60 foot berth. So, um, you know, as far as designing the facility, the owners have to, have to take into consideration whether they're going to uh, make it an efficient design for the marina or take into consideration the end users or work out a compromise in between. Now, this being a commercial marina, you know, with commercial fishermen and everything, I fully understand the, the desire for people that have waited seniority, you know, maybe for years, decades, to get where they're at, and it's your livelihood. So that is something that we will be taking into consideration, and I appreciate you bringing that up. So one of the things that was brought up, I guess this was the previous administration, was that by the, uh, up by the restrooms, they were going to dredge that and put uh, the CPVs up front by the restroom. So our customers then would not be putting the wear and tear on the dock. What happened to that proposal? I think that is much more useful than... There was discussion, are you talking about the plan where they were deciding, or, uh, discussing yeah. bringing out another um, whole pier? Yeah. No, so right off the back of the restroom, John. Over here? Right straight, uh, black line? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Having one just come straight out here? Straight, right. straight out this way. Yeah. 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 I haven't, I haven't seen those. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen those plans. Um, that might be even something we could do in addition to, to all this. I mean, that way, yeah. that way they're we're, we're all... Well, that got shut down because they wanted to put the office buildings on Birch Beach, yeah. where the tire shop is now. They wanted to put in... Uh, interpretive center, they want to do another restaurant or something, and so because they incorporated everything, that's why it got shut down. So where the... Because the people of El Granada didn't want to see that, or the coast yeah. side? Didn't want to see the addition of all those buildings? Right. So what if it's just the, the pier added there? <clears throat> added, John, added along here? Straight out this way? Right, they're going to put sheet piles in, yeah. uh, dredge it, right. yeah. and then put some buildings in, move the half big kayak shop down to the end, put a launch ramp for kayaks, right? It was, um, it was dredge, I think we're working with dredge beach. Perch beach. Perch beach. Yeah, so that when they moved us to the end of the parking lot, that that corner by the wall would have been uh, a beach. Right, was exactly. The, yeah, and so we would still have a similar operating right. area, uh -huh. but we would have been moved all the way. You would have been moved down again. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when that was about, that that plan was... Eight years ago? Five to years ago? Five to eight years ago. Uh, I, have, I have all of that. You do? Yes. Okay, well we can, we can definitely look at potentially doing that in addition to what we're planning on doing here as we, as we work through final plans for this, and that's what we're, we're trying to work through, is what we're going to do at HDOC. But we can definitely look at that. I would have to say that just from my experience with the uh, permitting agencies and trying to, to um, install and dredge and sheet pile walls and everything else, these, uh, this would be, uh, wouldn't be done in the next few years. You know, this would be something that would, would take a while. You know, to put docks where there hasn't been docks before is, uh, is a lengthy process. Uh, but we can, we can start working on it. Okay, so my next question is, uh, what kind of time duration are we going to be away from HDOC? Now, as we started to talk about before, um, you know, obviously no um, renovation or rebuild of a dock is easy when it's 100% occupied. 
you know, I've, I've run into this multiple times in my past. Um, when we have, when a marina has annual contracts with boaters, a lot of times before they plan to renovate something, they'll notify boaters well in advance that um, we won't be able to renew your next year's contract, so you'll need to find somewhere else for six months or three months or whatever else. In, in our instance, um, we do anticipate that since we're just doing one dock, that it would probably take a three month period. And in discussion with John thus far, but we want to talk with everybody here as well and in multiple other, or other meetings anyway, I can say we'll have at least one more, maybe two or three more. Um, we want to get your feedback on when, what time of the year you think would be best. Since it's a three month period, um, it may be that, um, and a year out anyway, we can, um, can try to locate other areas that are acceptable for each individual vessel within the facility. Others, during that three month period, part of the time anyway, might be able to, um, to get hauled out, um, you know, for two to four weeks, um, you know, have your bottom painted or whatever. Um, but we, we will have to, to determine what we're going to do with the, you know, 40, 50 boats there. So are you looking at making an extension on G-Dock as well? Yeah, yeah. And those are, uh, those are going to be, uh, back to that slide, yes. Um, yeah, I was trying to get to the overlay, I think you can see it here. Back to the one you were at. Uh, but so, the, this one you can see the, you can kind of see the underlying burst there. So go back to the I think it stops back. right here so, now. So, and yet in the slowest part of the year, especially for the sport fishing boats. Yeah, we're January thinking January, January, March. January. And that's the three month period. Yeah. January and, through March. And then I talked with John about that a little bit. And if we know that that's going to happen next January through March, then maybe six months later or before that, we stop, if we have a vacancy, we will stop subleasing or leasing those out so that we have places to move all the boats on each dock as that goes. And maybe it's the perfect time for all the sport fishing boats to do, you know, their haul outs or... But, but in my case, John, I do all the funerals and I'm constantly working all year long. So... The other thing is, if we move you to another place in the harbor, maybe we use the work dock as a loading dock for all the party boats during that three months. I mean, yeah, you are going to be, you know, it's going to be a disruption in your service. So, but at the, the end, the results are you're going to have a brand new dock, with brand new electrical, brand new water, brand new everything. And another so, a lot better, your docks aren't going to be listing. Another thing I've done in the past is in our, in, our, um, in our bid package, we require the contractors to bid such that they will keep X number of slips open at all times, meaning that they would have to. Um, potentially drive some uh, uh, temporary pilings and move some of the dock that they demolish and relocate it. So back to my question about yeah. G-Dock, which started this, is you're going to be adding berths to the end of G-Dock as part of this. Why don't you add those berths first? Because then you have a place for existing vessels to go while you're doing this work. That gives you an expansion of splips in the harbor for vessels on h Dock okay, to and, go. And I understand what you're saying there, except for we're not just adding to, to g Dock, we're replacing all of g Dock, just like we're doing with h Dock. Are you moving it, or is it gonna stay in the, in the same place? The way we've got it planned now for all of the docks as we get to them is total demolition, and total rebuild. You can't put a brand new dock because you can't tie your utilities. You can't bring in new power sources to add another transformer to, to, to satisfy those users. I was just saying, so there'll be you no know, power the water end. up to a year. All right. I'm just saying, if you built those on the end, then you could uh, have spaces for boats to go to. Well, maybe you, you could understand? put part of H dock there temporarily. Yeah, to... yeah. Well, relocating, yeah, relocating, uh, you know, as the contractors uh, are, would be required, relocating parts of the demo docks would be um, a possible solution. We've got a representative from Bellingham here that's nodding her head. <laughs> I mean, I know I've seen that. In fact, at San Francisco Marina, um, they did that as well. Dutra had to do so. 
They might be able to demo some of the HDOC and put it at the end of GDOC, but there would be no power of water at those docks. Yeah. So now, the is there, is is there no solution if we put in a temporary power supply and, and for that? You have to pull all new, brand new power supply down. There's not enough. The supply that's coming down is just enough to feed those transformers now. Yeah, you'd have to. I'm sorry. What's your name? Stephanie Fisher with Okay. Again, Dutra won the bid that I was talking about at San Francisco Marina. I think Bellingham did bid for it, but I've worked with Bellingham over in Abu Dhabi in the Middle East. Um, and um, um, Bahia Mar Yachting Center about 20 years ago. You guys did Bahia Mar Yachting Center. I was the marina manager at that time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the, the contract, you know, the, um, the bid package um, can be written such that it's there's the, you know, the winning bidder, the contractor's responsibility to in fact ensure that X number of slips are maintained. Now, we want obviously to keep costs down for the construction. Um, everybody as a, you know, as a whole wants that, I think. So we would um, try to keep that number of bursts as low as possible. And I would think that, um, that there may be some people that could help us in that way by, uh, by getting hauled out during part of the period. Um, and a five day uh, haul out for a three month project. What are you talking about? I don't know. I've managed two different boat yards. I've never seen anybody haul out for five days. <laughs> you guys you're welcome to the real world. world. Yeah. You guys get, a, get power washed and bottom paint and done? Hopefully. Yeah. Pretty much. Hopefully. Until we hope okay. welcome to the real world. Uh, you know, on the, more on the commercial yeah. you know, side, I think January is a good time for it. Right. It's more it's more our effects of January. Parties. Well, John was saying like January through March. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. you know, that'd be a good time. But the, but the things like Smitty's talking about, their whole sport business, the beginning of the dock, that's just constant. You get to the next dock, uh, E dock or uh, G dock, those first 15 slips are, are off the boat sail. That's, that's a, and, and those guys, where are you going to move them to? You, and where are you going to move Smitty to the end of, end of that dock? Because they're not going to give up their slips. They spent years to get the clientele to come to that slip. It's going to be tough. And the same thing on EDOC. There's nothing, there's nothing easy about it. You know, we just got to work with, you, with everybody, you know, amicably to try to figure out what the best solution is. Everybody's got to agree that we do need to replace the docks. You know, and you can't, obviously we can't just say, hey, you know, I, I don't want to disrupt my business ever at all. And, uh, you know, we can't replace the docks. So we, we got to figure something out, and we will. We'll work with you guys, and everybody work together, and we'll try to figure something out amicably. That's one of the reasons for this meeting tonight, and more meetings. Can I bring and one? maybe you guys can you know, put your heads together and, and think of solutions that'll help us. That's we'll make it happen. Awesome. Awesome. We always have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I bring up one issue on the fuel dock? Yes. yes. You know, there's a lot in there in that inside 60 foot clearance, right? New one. But my slip's the furthest one on the right. On the you know, right there, the first slip there. This one? No. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a new one. He's on the other side. He's a deal. Oh, you're currently on this side of the deal. I would finger. You know, it's I tie up there, so I want a bigger slip. But you know, maybe get rid of that first finger because you get a lot of transient boats that tie up right against the pier there, or they line up to get ice. And uh, yeah. and there's also a lot of activity guys moving, maneuvering in there to get ice by one. Boat fuels, right? So I would kind of like to see that more open, if possible. Yeah. This area here, yeah, more open, right? Yeah, more okay. than sixty feet for sure. Definitely. Okay. Um, you know, I actually was was questioning even having that big of an opening, um, but it's, so it's, I'm saying again, it's very good to, to get your guys' feedback and everything. But uh, um, to me, to me, that's kind of dead space when we no, when no, we are extending no. this dock out. And we're getting linear dockage for the fuel dock all along here and here. Yeah, but, but that's not going to roses in the ice plant. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you can't tie transient boats up. You can't drop off and go get some breakfast. You can't do it. And that's what that whole area is used right next to port. Okay. Well, look, again, all that's, kinds of boats that's what it's there. used for right now. But if we're providing yeah. other areas for that, um, okay. you know, like this backside, um, we can change without currently <coughs> used. Yeah, if you get rid of that one finger, you'd lose only one tie-up, mm -hmm. but you'd also gain that tie-up against the main 
Yeah. The main tier. There. Okay, right that Rebecca, you getting that? And, you know, and you're removing, removing this. It's uh, called the main walk for H shop. Yeah, removing this um, furthest west finger. And you're talking about tying just, up on the inside of the field box here for Well, or, you know, like the, a lot yeah. of big squid sanders tie up there. Sometimes they even yeah. tie too deep. Here? No, along the wall. Along here? So it's a 60 foot jump up above. Where the 60 oh, here. Yeah. 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 They'll yeah. tie two of them there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a highly used transient. Right. Yeah, it's, it's right. Very you go get groceries, you do all kinds of stuff right there. And high, that's a high use area that's yeah. necessary to right. have. Right. Okay. It okay. gets yeah. abused sometimes. Right. You know, but it's a very high traffic area, especially when the guys are icing up and, and there's a lot of boats there in town. You might be waiting in line for a couple hours to get ice. Mm -hmm. And the boat's all jockey around and take turns. Oh, right any fuel you want to be able to slide in. Right. Does it make sense to maybe move the ice machine uh, to a different location? Buy a new ice machine. Buy a new ice machine. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I no, we need a new ice machine. Yeah. Well, I have if, no if idea. you did that, <laughs> what about putting the ice machine out? Where that 78.6, the top point is, Here. right up and in there. Ice there. Yeah. No? I just Those ice machines are on the pier somewhere. They're on the dock. They, they run hoses. Yeah, they, they, they run yeah hoses. I don't know about moving the ice machine. But, but <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, if, yeah. if, if it needs to be rebuilt and we're looking at big picture items, would it be not more convenient out there? Then they could possibly service two boats at once as opposed to one. Not the way that Who's I was going to give you fuel. Well, that, yeah, <laughs> we, uh, I mean, we can't get this guy to give us fuel, right. much less anything else. Yeah. Well, by removing this, by removing this finger, right. um, I would agree that's just simply really one berth right. that we're, we're missing. And you I'm sorry, what's your first name? Porter. Porter. Porter, yours is your current berth is here. Yeah. Right. And you, there's nobody that's historically no. been here. But they'll, that 60, they'll put two 70 footers there, tie to side tie. And no, or or we'll tie okay. three salmon boats or there's all kinds of like configurations over the season what happens. What is, what is existing now? Do we know what what? what what that what is between between the distance Porter there? and yeah to Porter distance. from Porter Dock to the pier? Yeah. I mean I, that distance needs to be maintained. I'm gonna say eighty feet. Yeah, it looks like it you can kinda tell because this is the scale here. Yeah. So you can kinda tell that it's uh, it looks like ninety feet. I would yeah, go with nine because you could put Porter in there and you can still put two squid boats in there. And that's and that's important. Right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely need that space in there. Yeah. Okay, well that's a good point. Yeah. And you wouldn't be losing much on that one. Yeah. And I, I don't know, back to that my original question about that little shed that near hand uses for his oil. You know, he's able to take delivery right there and hand truck the stuff. If you're going to try to put that down on a pier somewhere where it's going to be all in the open oh. water, uh, you know, are you going to be able to do that? Put that's a thousand gallons of oil on yeah. top of the pier? That's a question we'll have to look into. I appreciate yeah. you bringing that up. You, you got that? It's the it's Keaton your hands um, oil shed. Shed. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What about it where the is relocated? Where do you put it? Yeah, we've got a plan now that shed to be removed. If the shed was moved to the other, or to the, if geographically in this, to the, to the um, south of the ice house, where his little office is there, is, is that section of pier there, which exists now, basically is, is just open water, where, where his hoses are slinging back mm -hmm. and forth. If that ice, if that shed was moved down to that or area, extend and that, that area pier, built. Extend that pier over further? Yeah, yes, yeah. you know, where, where the hoses are hanging down. Yeah. You know, if that if that area was filled in, right. you could then put his uh, shed his again. shed over on that yeah. side. In this area here, you mean? Right. Just, yes. Well, just, just below that. Just below yeah. that. Yeah. And and it's just here, out, out to sea from there. Right. Yeah. From that yeah. whole yeah. area there. There's out of the 78.6 yeah. line. All is there. Oh, okay. All, yeah. Yeah. all that right in there. Yes. and yeah. shut offs and stuff like that is there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you got to talk with Keith. That's oh yes. Yeah, I really hadn't. I gotta say, we had we hadn't thought about yeah. that being a, a real big deal there, um, but it's obviously it's time to talk to Keith, you know, about what he wants here as well. Last three times I talked to Keith. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last three times I talked to Keith. You want to buy it? Yeah. Yeah. See that that whole area that you see there that is dark, where uh, that's that's in this area. Yeah, yes. right through there. That yeah. that L shape or going out. Yeah. All of that area is open and just has Dead space at present. where his hoses are hanging down. That's an area that could be totally utilized in a much different manner 
more efficiently. Well, that's kind of what we were thinking, is that, uh, you know, when we're getting with him to design what he wants You, this you don't want to go down and, and turn the left corner and build anything there in case they extend the pier. But you're right, that whole area from the, from the office to the end of the pier, that's all free. Yeah, yeah this could so be, that's, that's one of this the could all be built in pier. as well. There, there, one of the all, further all, projects all would southwest. be to extend the pier. Yeah. 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 You're looking to use oil southwest? I'm sorry? Where they all use oil southwest? All, oh, correct. Oh. From there to the uh, right. bridge, little, is the to, the, to the light pole, the, yeah. the end of the dock right there, yeah. yeah. I mean, if that's at the bottom of that ramp, the new uh, ramp, if that'll be, right. you know, ADA accessible from the H dock. Right. You can maybe get rid of that big ramp that just goes to the little house. You'd get a lot of space underneath that ramp. You can wipe, double wipe the dock and put another little building on the corner. Okay. I think you can make it happen. Yeah. I, mean, I gotta say, I would think that uh, he's gonna be excited. You know, his, he and his staff are gonna be excited about getting all new dock here. And again, we plan to discuss with him. I, I would see no reason why we couldn't- Kind of uh, just rebuild it. We couldn't widen this, widen this area in here uh, and potentially put his, uh, how much oil has he got in there? Five gallon pails, you know. I know, I would just think- Five gallon pails, you know, one gallon well, pails, different, all types, different of types of oil. Yeah. Right. Gear oil, hydraulic oil, everything. Yeah. It's, it's got to be over a thousand gallons. Well, that's what I was. And a thousand yeah. gallons times, you know, times eight. So you're looking at, you know, at least what? Four you know, tons. Eight, you know, four tons. Yeah. Of materials. Right. So it's something, and I don't know if you're going to want to put it on the dock. I don't know if he's going to want to cart stuff all the way down to the dock all the time. So, but if you could build something, you know, just past his his ticket office right there, up on the top or something. Like you said, where the old old oil recycle center thing was. Yeah, yeah somewhere in there. That'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good for you guys to bring that up to us. That's something we need to, to consider very seriously. Again, you know, uh, hadn't been uh, uh, on my radar. I gotta say, you know, I'm used to. You know, if I want, we've just been here a while. <laughs> if I want, I want to. Uh, Finding places for the boat to go temporarily while you're doing the work. You said that EW is a new dock. Right. Um, but we're, but again, those those are uh, plans down the road. Right. Well, but you know, that, that EW is something additional that we don't have that at least gives you some berthage for some of the boats to go to possibly. But we're not. But the again, small, we're. But the dock gets moved up before. It, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so it just doesn't fit in the way it is now. But at, at present, you know, everything's going to remain the same. How many spots do you until have? We, until we get done with H-Dot. How many mooring spots are there? That are available for moorings? Yeah. Mooring balls? Yeah. 28, 30, at least. Maybe give some kind of incentive to people to, like you said, do the whole lot of the you have to give them a reason to do it, to work with you. Well, you know, we've, talk, we've talked about a few options and, you know, maybe for like the sport fishing boats that that are yeah. being used during that time, maybe making a deal for uh, maybe our sister harbor or, or something or, uh, we don't know. We're just, this is like we said, our first meeting, we're trying to figure everything out. And, right. mm -hmm. Are you going to do away with the sales talk? Not right now. Okay. So, I, I, I <coughs> just the sales dock along here. Just, just yeah. yeah, just to yeah. say it out loud is after moving boats from the work dock and up E dock and in, in that whole area, I, I don't know how you're going to put another slip in there and, and and be able to maneuver the boats in any kind of weather. If we get any side tides on the work dock or anything, then then I don't know how you're going to. I think the only way is because you're making them all smaller. I, well, then what you're basically doing is telling me I'm out of business for off the boat sales. No, you'd be, you're, you're 50, right? <laughs> Where am I going to go? You're 50 foot? Yep. Slip? Yep. So I'm going what another 50, 50 40, feet 40, down 40, the dock? You have to be green. 50 or 60 feet down the dock? Over here. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> no. I just no. spent 15 years developing yeah, a okay. business and you're That's telling why me I'm that's why we're talking to you guys. I'll say go pile rocks. So I go back again to my original argument here. If you rebuilt G Dock and did that work and built the extension out right. on G Dock, that would that would give you the additional burst for the larger boats when it comes time to do H Dock. Oh, so you're saying you were saying 
Just do that uh, one first. Just okay. do the whole G dot first. Whole thing oh, I thought first. you I thought you misunderstood. Well, no, I said, we were, said just the M, but, yeah, just it, the end. but now I'm saying why not do that whole thing first? Because, because there's not as much yeah, because there's not as much uh, commerce annual on demand right. from fishing um, fishermen on G dot as there are as there is on H dot. You got that, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Let's we'll play with that. We'll play with that idea. Um, again, um, it's, it's not off. That's going to give you the most expansion berths out of <clears throat> working in the whole harbor. There, you're adding new berths to 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 our already tight situation. Yeah. So, if you're going to displace boats, displacing the boats on G dock, and a lot of the boats on G docks are. Um, they're, yes, they're commercial boats, but most of them are commercial salmon. Um, there's, there's a bunch of crabbers there as well. Um, and they would be, I think, a lot more amenable to being s dispersed through the harbor uh, temporarily, except for, you know. You're, you're, tell, you're telling a guy with off the boat sales in the first 30 slips that he cannot do business for 30, no. for 30 days. The, the, those days. first, that for, but that's gonna, it's gonna happen anyway. I'm just telling you, is that's what you're up against. I, I, I understand. That, that is a vocal minority. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but that's gonna be, that's the same problem we're gonna run into with, with H-Stock. Well, well, I don't think there's know. gonna be an easy, a real easy solution. Right, but I'm just saying, this would give that expansion. So part of my problem is my my ashes scattering. A, a lot of them are very elderly, right. and right. they barely can make it down right. the ramp, right. holding on, and then getting right. out to the boat. And so you're going to ask them to walk out at the end of G dock so you can service them out there? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it's it, that's my point. Is right. It, I agree with you. So if you do G dock first, where are you going to be when we do H dock at the end of G dock? Right. I'm not 50 foot. I'm 40. It doesn't matter. It doesn't when matter. You do H dock. You got to put you somewhere. Yeah. But I'm a 40 foot berth. I can go, you know. If there's an opening. Yeah. yeah. But then, and, and all those berths in G Dock are all going to be full by the guys who want the off boat sales. Well, I, I mean, at I least understand. the first 15 of money inside. Yeah. So you're going to have to go at least. I, I understand. I'm, 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 I'm trying to right. work I, here. I, come I, on I, with I agree. With that. I agree. Yeah. John, do you have any ideas where I would go for three months? Of Santa Cruz? How many can you put there? Four? What's that? Four. God. He'll, he's one of the four. I know, but still. And like I said, you know, we got all those sport fishing boats yeah. that don't really use this time of year. And and hopefully there's no squid or salmon or anything because otherwise that whole area you're never going to get. This time of year, I'm well, that's why. We're if if this if time. you can start in January and if you can, it, it can but yeah. 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 you know what? They call up. I need a slip. Sorry, we're full. We're going to deal with all our permanent tenants first. I called Santa Barbara right. down there and they said they're redoing their docks. They don't have a slip. Yeah. yeah. What's, that's, that's just, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I understand. What, what, what's the downside? Okay, we keep these docks and in 10 years they fall apart and then you guys are going to be complaining to us that the docks are falling 10 apart. years from now, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> John, is Oyster Point full now? No. Uh, okay, uh, what about temporarily seeing how many people might be able to move to Oyster Point? That was one of the talks we were talking yeah, about earlier. Too far too far I wouldn't. I wouldn't anticipate that being yeah. real, real popular. Well, not, but not, no, there's, there's a lot of boats that aren't doing fish sales. Well, it's not that. It's, it's the sport fishing fleet that we right. have. You know, right. like uh, all those big luxury fishing docks. Yeah, right. Right. they're just sitting there. Yeah, just tell them, hey, for three months. I'm sorry, it's a. It's a give them a reduced. If, yeah, yeah. Reduce. I was going to say, give them an incentive there. for that. Incentive to do that and try to make it work for everybody. And in addition to just we're not going to make everybody happy. It will never make Smitty happy. Yeah. So we're just going to work with it. And you said I was trouble me. I know you are. <laughs> Well, it is going to be an inconvenience no matter what, but you know, to, to get it the is. new docks. This is the first time I got to say I've ever heard boaters want not to be the first dock replaced. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the other way around. You start on our dock. Why aren't you starting on our dock? But uh, I understand the business aspect from you guys. You know, so, yeah. Is the uh, time frame for this winter of 2019 or 2020? 
Um, we were hoping 2019, but uh, there's hurdles to overcome, for sure. And uh, you know, again, we we want to to uh, work with everyone that we can and try to to come up with an amicable solution where the majority of people, anyway, um, say, okay, well, it's not comfortable. It's going to be bad for three months, but let's get it done. And then we've got a brand new dock, you know, which hopefully customers and everything else. Uh, can, can you build January through, through March and stay on schedule? That's, you know, the weather window, you know, being all um, the poorest weather as well, it's right. going to be challenging. But... Uh, uh, Are you going to get through the permit process that quick? We can try, and that's what we're trying to do at present. I wish you liked yeah, that. I mean, <laughs> you know, it. it just the... And Neil can and talk more. And they're, I mean, I've been through their whole thing of how they build docks. They're all going to be built before they even ship down here. Yeah. They're unbelievable up there. Neil can talk more to this, but the, the permitting for replacement is, is much easier than, uh, oh, okay. you know, than the if we were do building new docks. Now, these That's extensions true. over, That's true. these extensions where we haven't had docks previously um, will be more difficult, I think. But... Still, it's, it's in current fairway, you know, in a marina, you know, in the inner harbor of a marina. So it's, uh, it's not going to be as difficult. There? Mm -hmm. there is? Okay. I haven't been out there for a while, so. Uh, that's why F dock hasn't been expanded. That's where it starts getting shot. On the inside? The, on F dock. Yeah. Yeah. F dock and H dock's on. Where Rando is? Yeah. He gets there, though. Yeah, but so if there's just not much channel. Out another... There's not much channel right. outside. Okay. Exactly. No, he's fine, and it's fine another. 60, 70 feet outside of him. Oh, okay, so he's got room to turn around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone here tonight is, is happy with not uh, with us not having uh, center pilings. I know some people are, uh, you know, desire even double fingers, you know, finger on each side of their boat. There you go. <laughs> um, and I understand, you can walk up and down, clean your boat, him and, and it's pilings. easy to get in <laughs> even after a few drinks, a few cocktails. But uh, yeah, you know, for, for the marina as a whole, not having the center pilings makes it much makes the marina be much more flexible in the long run. You know, we can put a wide boat right. in the same well as a more narrow vessel. So, but on the sixty-five foot slips, there'll be a piling in the center of the dock, going down the fingers. Oh, yeah. Go to the next the next slide. Because I didn't see them on. Yeah, there's a the, 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 the yeah, pilings. Yeah. You're talking about in the in the uh, finger itself. Yeah, in the finger itself. So one on the end, one in the middle. One in the middle. Yeah. There's one okay. in the middle. Yeah. I don't know how few oh, these guys good. drive boats. Uh -huh. Oh, the one point fingers. Okay. <laughs> 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 the ones with the destroyed dots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the but 65s. That's because of the weather. Okay, 65s will have one. On all the 65s have two, 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 two bodies. Yeah. Yeah. The 55s are just kind of gaining from the one on the opposite side of the Right, right. I mean, we do come and go. And, yeah. and this one shows a little bit better. I don't know if it makes a difference. That very first 50 slip is, is quite a, you know, it's not right up against Johnson Pier. We had so, a vision of main walk going to H and then going to F. I mean, going to G and F, but we, we got so rid of that. Me, but in that first one, the, the, the first 50, um, where Dennis is there, okay, he ties up to the finger pier. Where's the other boat tying up to? not. So that's not that's, just, that's good. It's the same as it is. No, that's kind of, that's yeah, well, see that, well, you, they, that could be a tie up on the on that gangway. So we made we made it wide enough to have a finger width and support the gangway. And you're talking about right here. Yeah. There's 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 a four more like five foot width to where the gangway is going to land. Oh. You get rid of some of those piles. But that very first spot was never intended to have a boat there. And, right. and I've seen the exact same thing before. I think we're early on in discussion. We are. Uh, even with Moffat and Nickel, um, I would agree that uh, you know that getting a boat in here would be very very difficult. Um, An additional one. Yeah. Now, uh, whether or not we have this area prepared, meaning it has a uh, a electric pedestal, water, cleats, where we can put a boat there, is one thing. Whether or not we uh, Assign somebody. You have to go there. 
That's a different thing. You can, well, so you can put a I boat there, but the difficulty for that guy to get into the next slip yeah. with a little bit of weather, yeah. you're going to crunch a boat or you're going to get somebody hurt. So well, yeah. Again, well, again, again as it stands, yeah, right. that is a 40-foot finger. Right. As it stands right now, yeah. and for Dennis to make his turn right. to get into that berth, if that's a 50-foot um, uh, finger, finger yeah. he's not going to make that turn. Right. So you can't, you know, that finger, that's, that's the, that finger goes right through the center of my boat. You can see my boat's smaller than Yeah, right here. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and that, the... So this he needs that space, and he needs me right. to be a smaller right. boat right. in there for him to maneuver to right. get into his berth. If Bob was in my berth, then then he, he would constantly be crunching into Bob trying to get out. into that berth. Yeah. 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 So you can't again. That can't be a fifty foot uh, whatever the the length of that that uh, finger, finger pier is. Yeah. It has to be shorter. Okay. Exactly uh, to match what we have now. Let's let's write that down as well, Rebecca. That and I can. You know, uh, again, I wouldn't necessarily think that we would be putting, a, you know, two fifty-foot boats in this well ever. But you uh, put the other except maybe for a boat show or something. And, and, and the, the other aspect is you put a floating boat. right, yeah. and, and now you're going to put somebody that's going to hinder him trying to get in and out of the spot. No, what I'm saying is we don't. You know, management doesn't have to put a boat there at all. But, uh, but having it prepared, you know, if, if you, you have a capability, it will get used. You will well. have boats in there. You get a There'll be skips or whatever right. coming up in there, right. tying yeah. up all right. the time, which is going to make life miserable for them. Good point. Okay. You know, if you put if you put a cleat in there right they will pipe six boats to that one cleat. Here okay. go. at present i can't recall this one but at present the the finger is right in here no it's be right right inside there. there right there yeah, yeah. that's his bow it's about the cabin, the cabin door that looks like the bow of a boat that's right the bow there. Of a boat. yeah this the piling is right about uh even so the, the finger five. the finger is just over further here, right? Yeah, but and the, the, the right figure here. ends right at the top of those zero. Right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah right there. Right yeah. there. Yes, yes, right okay. there. Okay. So in reality, what we got here, correct me if I'm wrong, but what we have is the new finger being further east than the current finger, right? By the looks of that, by about maybe a foot. Okay. And so what we would need to do then is make this current oh. current finger design shorter, <clears throat> right? Easier. And then not have this questionable spot, and that's questionable anyway with the gangway right there, as a berth at all, right? People will but, but people will, people come in, they'll tie up to the, to the and gangway. And they go up to the restaurant. They'll, yeah. they'll tie up to the and, gangway. And then Dennis to... will come in with a stack of people and a little bit of wind, and he'll yeah. have nothing but problems. Yeah. No, that's why there, there's just pilings there now, and nobody goes there and cuts. Right. Okay. Well, we do have to have a, a platform here for the gangway, right? right? So we could save money then if we're not going to have that at birth, cut the platform shorter, uh, and I think that would then solve the discussion, wouldn't it, or the, the challenge that you guys are bringing up? Yeah. Uh, you know, and make it where it's obvious it's not, um, you know, like a full length uh, a birth or anywhere for somebody to in fact tie up to. But I guess we could even put a little bit of... slip and you can put two 20-footers in there, no problem at all. And they'll go up and have lunch. Right. Right? Well, I, and, and whether it's crab season or whether it's salmon season or rock cod, they'll just go there and tie and because they don't want to haul the boat out. They want to go up and have some lunch and go back into the afternoon. Okay, so you're talking about somebody while he's gone stealing right. his berth, yes. going right. into it? Yes. Because there's a, there's a place there to park and they'll find that. Wow. And it's close to the ramp so they can get all their crap down out of the truck and the boat. You have <laughs> yeah, I don't people know. pulling up just to we'll do that, that to have the convenience of being close to the ramp. Right. Okay, yeah. well let's, let's talk about it for a minute because obviously uh, one option might be just some sort of um, barrier. Uh, That's what you I know, like a, I don't want to say a chain link fence. That's not, it's not uh, aesthetic. Right. But we could have some sort of a barrier there to prevent people from tying right. here. And they'll but, tie to the barrier. Gonna, that, that just gives them more places to tie. But to say that, you know, to say that we can't have a berth here, because when he's no, out, no. people are going to, to get in his there. berth. He wants you know. there. Yeah. But like I say, now there's just pilings there, so nobody ties there. So yeah. he, he's able to get in and out. And it gives him 
quite a bit of room there to maneuver because there's times where he's got pushed pretty close to the pylons. Yeah. And, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and back in the day, when he drives way better now. But good but, Oh, yeah, good <laughs> Southern? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, the, that, the float that's supporting the gangway is only that wide to provide the width of a finger. So it can be narrowed up so it's just big enough to accommodate the, the, the gangway. Side. If you just put it narrow enough to take the gangway, there's not going to be a place for them to get off onto. If, 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 you, put, yeah. if you put the gangway well, they're going to go with, with uh, um, coming down the width of the gangway with uh, um, fencing. Um, I put fencing. Just don't put any cleats. There's no place for them to tie up. They'll tie up to the, to the floating dock. They'll, they'll, float, look, they'll tie up to the gangway. Look, look, at how they tie, on look how they tie the skips up to the dock underneath our rampway. Look how they tie up to the dog on yeah, they'll the, tie the up sales dock. dock. You're not going to stop those people. They're, they're just going to do They're going to stop them anyway. Even if you shorten it out and don't do nothing, they're still going to do the same All thing. All I'm doing is trying to make, make it uncomfortable for them. Trying to make it easy for whoever's in that slip to get there because that's a hard slip to get into. If you put up, you know, like the iron gate, like you have closing off the fuel dock, you know, and, and right in front of my berth, if you put something like that along that side, but, like but then they're going to, then, then you have them pulling all the way in. They're tied to the, the chain link fence, or you're I agree. for that and tie I, it I, I You're giving them more spots to tie up than you put a fence I agree. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yes. Fortunately, we've got excellent uh, hardworking Harbor Patrol. You're going to wake them up. That'll <laughs> run right down. I'm, up. I'm watching you all the time. That'll run right down and <laughs> take it and, and chase them off. Okay, well, we can, we'll definitely look and see what we need to do yeah. there to uh, look for eliminate us. that as a berth and make it. Uh, I, I have to say I agree that we, uh, you know, having, having it look on paper, you know, having it look on paper that a berth can be here, but trying to maneuver a boat around in there. Unless, you know, and that's what I was just looking at in the other pictures, you know, if it's possible to, you know, it depends if he's single screw or, uh, you know, or twin screw, but, you know, obviously if he's able to, to come in and turn like this and then and get pushed back up against in. the dock. What's that? And get pushed up against the dock. From the, the wind. So you I have to turn around mid down <clears throat> down the whole row on the other side of the e dock. I have to spin the boat around midway down the dock so that I can back into my slip. So so you know this whole thing about what you think people can maneuver and what people can maneuver, I see as two different things. All right. Well, actually, I'm not saying until I do it, so I'm not disagreeing with you. We do it. Yeah, and I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh, so, uh, just a berth here, and shortening this finger, Rebecca. That'd be you get that? And doing something with this to make sure that Pete, or we try to deter People the seagulls. Most of them will tie on the other side there. That's Correct. The most they can tie and they run up and get their stuff. Because there's nowhere to tie them. Yeah. If there was a place to tie, they'd be there too. Well, they'll be able to come in here, right? Yeah, right. a lot of them. Right, that's a... right. Because right? we're going to remove this finger. Yeah. Right. What, what are the widths on the 65s? You know, that's something maybe right. consider. 48 maybe. foot double width earth. So it's 24. The extra wide widths. 24 or so. For, for that. What are you saying, making them more narrow? No, making them wider. Because there's okay. the tendency of uh, all the new boats being built. There you go. And, uh, and more babies. 68, so 48 extra wide, so that's 24 feet wide. That's not wide enough. That's what I'm saying. What, that's what, what he's saying. Down, you know? they're, yeah, they're right here. What we got going on. 36, maybe 38. So they're 44 now, and you're going to put most of them would be 44 for the big ones. Four feet wider, that's two feet per boat. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if it worked. Take That's another one out and space it out. Even more? Yeah, it's not going to be worth it. You know, that's, you got to look at how many slips you can fill or what, you know, that's... Okay, that. we're looking at this. John, look at the H-Stock that you printed out for me. Yeah. Tell me what the widest beam boat on there is. What are you for? 26? 20. No, on the sheet, John. The aluminum boat's 26, isn't it? Uh, no, it's probably about the same. Oh, it is? The ocean eight. Uh, beam. Uh, Look at him, he's looking, because there's no wide beam well, bolts on that well, sheet. Because they don't fit. That's why <laughs> no, they're not in there. Right. Yeah. There's no space for them. Unless they go in one I had to move to the outside because I didn't fit yeah. on the inside. Okay. So well, that's why, we're, okay, that's why it's important that we're having this discussion tonight, because looking at paper yeah. right. and trying to figure stuff out isn't right. giving us the accurate information. You just couldn't put anybody in there. Yeah. So. All right. 
So uh, we need to look at wider beam first, and I, me and Neil talked about that actually. Yeah. And we need to go back to talking about it. But John printed this up for us, and I was proved an idiot because yeah. I was telling him that we need to have wider verse. And, and if you look at this paper, Neil's laughing at me. If you look at this paper, 14, 16, well, where's Ocean Angel? I'm just looking at 16 foot wide was built in the 70s. The new I'm one just saying that's what's on the paper. Right? So people didn't give it. I mentioned that to Neil. The people, you know, we can't go by what's on the yeah. paper for the, you know, for the beams. No, you can't. But you know, it's yeah. also you guys gotta let the white. Twenty-one. Slip rinse. Twenty-one feet wide is the widest one on paper. That's me. yeah, and that's not accurate. You know, know, um, he's liar now. Okay, well we need you to get. Ocean Angel. What are he's twenty-one. Twenty-one. Are you twenty-one too? Yeah. I'm sorry, the light's not real great mm -hmm. here. All right, well, we need to get Moffat and Nick, we need to get yeah, our consultant the, the, the more uh, realistic um, look at what, so what beams we need and relook at it. Yeah, that's fine. We can widen them. It's just we're going to lose two. Yeah. We'll lose two bars. That's the other, the other thing, like I mentioned earlier, though, you know, there's there's two options here. Is, is, is make, yeah, yes, one. that's exactly. Ah. That was that was a little skinny and wide. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, usually the skinny boats you don't take you don't maximize the length yeah. of the slip either. You know, usually you end up with a shorter boat than you know than the full length of the what yeah. the you've been slip putting in two sport boats. That's a little putting in two sport boats when you got a, a big yeah. boat. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. That's that absolutely right. For as you know, the district is running a business. It doesn't make sense because we can't do that year round. We'd rather have the boat in there year round. Yeah. We got a 21 foot boat wide, so we can only put in next to it right now. We got two. This thing is uh, what? 11? 15 feet for the next one. A 50 foot boat ain't gonna be 15 feet wide. Unless right. it's a sailboat. Right. And so, you so want to put talking... a sailboat next to a commercial <laughs> steel fishing boat. Right. So you're talking to a three small boats. And the other thing we got to, you know, consider, which is made clear to me tonight, which is great, that, uh, you know, that like I've had in other places, um, people are attached to their current locations. So we need to, uh, we need to recognize that, and we will. Now, I can't say everybody's going to be happy, you know, I mean, we try to make as many people happy as we can. That's, that's all we can do. Uh, and kind of be, you know, as long as we're transparent and trying to tell everybody, hey, we, we looked at everything, but this is what we can do. Uh, uh, and I think we're going to be able to. Uh, all of us putting our heads together and more meetings with you guys, and gals, we uh, be able to uh, get pretty damn close. Uh, so again, uh, windage and uh, uh, at one of the facilities that I managed after we had the design done for the whole marina the uh, and whips width of you know the width of the wells determined it was uh, it was then that they discussed with the tenants uh, the fact that they were not installing and had not designed the berth the berth widths for center pilings and everybody wanted center pilings you know again many people want Double fingers. Yep. I just got back from, I just got back from San Pedro. We're 899 bursts at the Cabrillo Marina. 899 bursts. Every one of them. And those are Bellingham ducks. Every one of them are double uh, finger pair. This is amazing. Uh, again, you lose, yeah. you lose the number of, you know, you lose some number of bursts when you're putting double finger piers on them. And there's, and there's crazy, <laughs> And there's crazy costs associated with that. Yeah. Um, uh, but the center pilings, if, um, if I were hearing that that's a, that's a mandatory thing, uh, we need to, to be made aware of it. I would not, I'd like to not have it. That makes it almost impossible for me to yeah. Yeah. put my boat in a slip in any kind of weather. The that's center pilings. Yeah. Yeah. Center pilings are just, for, for, for Har Harbor, I don't think it would work. I mean, because they're I have to, sorry. Go ahead. Go on. I mean, the approach that I have to take sometimes to get the okay. wind more in, in, you know, there's no way. Right. Okay. Good. I mean, I just <laughs> we want to just make it to make it clear and make sure we're on the same page as we move forward. But it also gives the marina more flexibility as well, um, because as there's turnover and everything else, we are able to put 
wider, a wider bow to mm-hmm. next to, um, even a foot or two I foot. I think that's one thing we agree more on. More narrow. Yeah. <laughs> no center pylons. Right. Okay. Well, again, uh, it's not a matter of agreeing or disagreeing. We just want to. We want your guidance. Yeah. So it boils down to that's the purpose of the meeting tonight. Not. You know, no, not they're, to, to me, they're a terrible idea. That's just me. All right. Well, here they got an X on them. Good. I love it. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't think I had. Uh, oh, does anybody have strong preference on the the uh, uh, Neil? I didn't ask him to to show a picture of some rub rail. And this is what, what I like, um, is these D-type rub rails. Um, does anybody have strong, ref, strong preference or uh, desire I'm, I'm, I'm for uh, yeah, rub rails at all? It would be on top of the, most, either an HDPE rub rail or a timber rub rail. No, I, I think they're, they're nice to well. protect the probably the edge of the dock. Protect the, the dock the, and the, the, the boats boat as it. well, yeah. Does it go all the way out to the end, or do you put a roller at the end, or what do you do? No yeah. rollers. We'll put, we'll put a corner. I'm just yeah. corner. Corner. Yeah. 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 corner. Yeah, yeah. The, the rollers, have, uh, so, well, that's something else we can discuss, but the no, rollers no, I've had no, before, no, but they, no. you know, the bearings go bad, they, they get hit, they bend, and they right. get ripped off. Right. And yeah. you put a big steel boat against it, it don't work. Right. What they did at Oyster Point was the plan only called for the HDPE or the, or the whalers, but what got put in was a D. On top of it. Yeah, that's what I've had. got added on. I don't know if it was a change order or I've had the exact same thing happen before, is that it's, it's not it's discussed it. in advance with yeah. the with the voters themselves and then um, and then you end up putting them in afterwards at um, you know additional costs and, and trouble and time and, and everything else. So uh, and, and then there's sometimes people have preference on the white or the black. Are you guys any sort of preferences? Most of the black is non-marring. And it looks better. Well, that would have to be essential. And, yeah. and the, the, the other question is, if I'm loaded and I'm below that, am I going to be rubbing up against the bolts? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. No, the, the rub rails are all going to be recessed. You're you know, not understanding they, my question. Like that. No, I'm not There's understanding. The question. bolts sticking out in the wood there below the rub rails? Here? Right there. Yeah. Both yeah. of them. The, not the only the dog, but the, the one that secures the deed. To, to hold the rubber on, too. Both one. those bolts. These are just nails. These are ring to chain nails. Those are your thing. What I'm moving on, I think, right? So those are going to be holding the rubber on in the future. Yeah. yeah. They're not. What I'm rec- saying they're not recessed. What I'm saying no, is that depending on how much of a load I have in the boat, I can run at the guardrail or I can run below the guardrail. And if I'm below that black guardrail, then I'm going to be rubbing up against the bolts. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. Yeah. So right now we have the D, the D, so it doesn't go up and above. Right. It just sits at the, the, the top, goes to the edge, right. at the top, and then goes down. And where do you fasten it? Uh, at the top of the, because it's D, so you know, it looks like a giant D, so top and bottom. So, but, you, but you're fastening it inside of the bubble, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're not fastening it below the dock like, like I'm complaining about. Yeah, I it's, well, No, they got a flange. Yeah, yeah, that one is. John, they got a flange like this on the top and the bottom, yes, you're saying? exactly. Yeah. And it just sits uh, 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 even with the face of the dock. Yeah. So it's just this flange here is vertical as well, is exactly. what you're saying. Exactly. That's all. Yeah. But it's a D-rail. It's the same rail that we have. Yeah. Uh, these that cur- curve over the top uh, are just what I'm used to. You know, but, uh, again, maybe it's something guys to, to kick around and look at other marinas and see what you... The ones we got seem to... I mean, yeah, you know, those, yeah. you know, something along okay. those lines. And that's John. I don't remember looking at them. Just derail. Yeah, they're just just like this. Just only like that, the flange is on top of the vertical instead, of, the top. instead of laying over the top like yeah. that. The one that got put into the oyster is kind of like these, where the, the top is. Yeah, that's the that's what I've um, experienced the most. They just hold on, I think, better than the ones that are um, totally reliant on. Um, hold out there. Can, can on you the go to the existing dock picture? Pardon? Can you go to the existing doc picture? Yeah. Just for for, for reference here. There. There it is, right there. Yeah. See, see those are right attached right above the arm. Yeah, yeah it's on the top and the bottom. So I would think, Jimmy, that if it was attached on the top, it would be a little butter. Yeah. What it, it is, well, it does it sometimes. It sometimes I actually right. get my guardrail above that 
Yeah. I and mean, my boat's rail really late. When the boat's light, I get it up on top and it actually scraped all the paint off the bottom of the ground. Yeah. I can see the issue with because I had the same thing with my rubber rail. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. I just that gives a good point of reference. All right, and we we kind of uh, you know discussed the uh, the dock boxes, and and here is a, a picture, I guess, of uh, of those ones that uh, you know were discussed before, where the the plumbing goes into the dock boxes themselves, and yeah. this is your guys' marina. You know, I'm not going to be the one uh, making ultimate decisions. I, I would, uh, I would say that these are problematic. You know, when you got the plumbing, um, I, every marina I've had, we've replaced them. You know, uh, I, I personally, as having to do maintenance, I do not want to see that because if their dock box are locked, right, then I got to go cut their locks right. off, yeah. take all their crap out of their dock right. box, yeah. and fix right. the plumbing. And they yeah. get struck. The dock boxes get hit. You know, oh, yeah. I lose a bunch of dock boxes. So no. is the other way? You, you see the water faucets over on the left side by 04 between the cleat and the yeah, right there, left, right there. That's the water right there. So are you talking about doing a pedestal like that, or like the pedestals that's, that we have today? That's I don't think that's right. water. There. Yours is that low? Mine's, mine's, mine's right like the, uh, looks like the water. Yeah, mine's is right that water? Yeah. That is. One of the other. Usually, pictures, usually the, the pedestal is. One of the other pictures shows it even better, but that's the picture. Of, that's what I assume is the water. Yeah, she just said that is the water. Yeah. Okay. Usually the pedestals themselves, you know, have the water in them. Are you guys interested in having? We have those we like have the water yes. away from the pedestals now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Write that, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, no, because we generally put our hoses coiled around. Um, right, so and that makes it pretty nice because that kind of tucks it all away, and it's right there. Somebody wants to grab it and drag it, they do. You know. Uh, so, I mean, what do you guys think about dog boxes? Do you want no. them? No. Most of the dog boxes. Chad put a dog box in front of Tyler's boat, and he hasn't opened it up for 20 years. You know, but I mean, this is. I see. Here's the other thing with dock boxes. It's not that I don't like them or like them, but most people put hazardous waste in them. Right. Whether it be oils paints, or cleaners or whatever. Or cleaners or right. Or whatever. Right. And that's illegal. Right. No, I've, like I gotta say, I've seen that a lot. Right. You know, and even you know, some cans rust out the bottom, right. and then it's all over, coming through the holes in the bottom of the dock boxes yeah. where they're. So that's something that us as the yeah. harbor have to check on and tell yeah. people they cannot do it. What are you going to do? Go around cutting locks so you can look inside? Well, when we do our you know, inspection? Yeah. No, I, but I, 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 I think it's something. Okay. I, mean, I like it for certain reasons. Right. But um, as you know, running the harbor, right. I don't like it. I like If I had a boat, I would like one. <laughs> nice sunny day. Now, the, the, only, yeah. the only thing I'll, I'll bring up right. is uh, if we make a decision to not install dock boxes. There won't be any dock boxes. It, it can't be that, you know, that we right. arbitrarily, you know, to brand new docks that are under warranty, that we um, just say, okay, go ahead and yeah. install your own dock box. You know, right. and people out there with hammer drills and, and voiding warranty on the, you know, the dock boxes. I see the sport boats is way better because, you know, on the commercial yes. boat, Correct. the cruise is going to fill up. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <It's totally> correct. <laughs> no, right? it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, some, some marinas have, uh, and some harbors have um, storage areas shoreside. You know, to where you can cool. You can, uh, <laughs> you can have a, yeah. uh, you know, like a four by four by six foot storage area. You know, to store some. Uh, Twenty nine ninety five a month, Smitty. There you go. <laughs> and and where are they going to go? Yeah, the upper parking lot. <laughs> Well, that might be something we could do down the road, but um, yeah. what you guys are saying pretty much is We've that you're, that you're storing time. everything on your boats? Well, that's just me. You know, I'm a commercial yeah. guy. Yeah. we got sport guys, and we got you know commercial sport fishing boats that have different needs. They do, too. So, yeah. For mm -hmm. me, I'm fine with that one, but right. might, for the majority of people, maybe there's a good deal. Well, okay. uh, well, we'll talk time. more about that at the next, at the next yeah, meeting, then. We're not going to make any final decision on it right now. Because, However, yeah, I mean, it does have a, it has a trickle effect because if we can put guys' lives into the knee now, to get the 
pedestal. Or if we can put pedestals there, yeah. then I agree. You know, I don't like that pedestal down. So it's so a really good situation. point. We'd prefer to give up the dock box so we can put and the put them on the knee. Put the pedestal there, yeah. Yeah. so that we, that's out of the way of the dock. Yeah. But then it also opens up the guide pile can go into the knee too. On what? the other side, the guide pile can go into the knee now rather than the, the center of the bird. Oh, cool! The center so of the well. it, it, oh, has, be, it has a domino effect if we have the knees available for anything. Right. We can, we can put a pile there too if that's preferable than mid birth. That's really cool. So yeah. you can yeah. you can back in and you got more space. You don't that's have a guide nice. pile. And, and I'll tell you that way. There's been many times getting on the boats on the weekends with a lot of people that that little area by the piling, I can squeeze right by the crowd and go to the boat because they're all standing on, on, the, on the, either the finger pier or the main pier and you can slide right by there and get to your boat. It's, it's really nice having that little bit of space like that. That's cool. So, so that, corner, corner, yeah, you put the pilings there in the corner? So yeah. basically it'll look like that bottom picture. We could have a guide pile on one, we could have a pedestal on the other. And you don't have to have an issue of people running into them too. Because if you put them in between the two boats, so that's a decision that, that can be made. But cool. yeah, cool. the way it is now, we started with the premise of giving everybody one, so everything had to go elsewhere. Right, right. So now it's we can we can back the truck up if yeah, we need please. to. Because I'd really rather have a pedestal there. Now there still will be transformers. The two transformers are right. going to go mid berth, but probably on the big side. Right. I don't I don't know for certain, but just because there's more room on the big, right. um, there. But that takes up some space in a slip. And then another one in a slip out of the whole finger pier, so it's not a big it's issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, they, they some guy knows big. he's got that there all the time, and he doesn't want to run. People in bow in, and uh, it's not that right. Big yeah, those guys are pretty much going to have to go. Right, yeah, they so, get used to it. Yeah, and and there, it just depends on the size of the transformer, the actual design of the transformer, right. how the dock manufacturer wants to build that out. It's going to vary by the <clears> dock <throat> manufacturer. So yeah, but not too feeny though. Uh, I don't know. About the same as they are now. Right. I would, maybe a foot bigger, I'd say. Yeah. But, yeah, I couldn't see it anymore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, our goal is to make the transformer door open into the main walk, not open backwards Stand or sideways. Stand in the water. Stand in the water. So as long as you open toward the main walk, you don't have to give them a lot of space on the, on the water side and the edge, yeah. so we can minimize that. Cool. That's, that's the hope, but we'll see. How many times have we had to work on a transformer? Uh, we just have to get in there and turn off the power and we've got to do the main, yeah. you know. But I mean, it's not like electrical you know, work. big issue. Yeah. Well, three, four times a year, maybe. Yeah. Cool. More reset and breakers, right? Yeah, but we've got a new dock, so hopefully we don't have to do that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> will, will the new breaker actually trip on the new docks? I <laughs> Are you going to put a leg where it grounds? GFI? No. GFIs don't work. You can't put GFIs in the boat. Oh, yeah. so right oh, now, you can run a power drill on an yeah. extension cord and Throw drop it in the water, and, and you can hear it running, and it doesn't trip the breakers. <laughs> Until the drill eats up, it runs. All right. But it, 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 G, the GFIs, they put them on in Bodega Bay and, and first foggy day, it tripped everybody's breaker. So what about AFIs? AFI? What, what is Art it? Art Faults? I don't know. Art I'm not an electrician. Yeah. 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 Because that's, that's getting to be the new standard now. All I know is through the moisture, it was enough to trip smaller breakers. Yeah. No, the arc, the, that's, that's the dip, one of the differences between the arc faults and the GFCIs. AFCI versus GFCIs. Okay, so what does that do? The, the, uh, uh, the GFCIs detect any, uh, are supposed to detect any uh, volt, uh, voltage that uh, um, is stray. Not returning. returning. Right, whereas an arc fault detects any spark or arc or direct short, whereas uh, it, it, it's so a then different. The, so then the question of a direct short in the foggy day, is that a direct short or is that? No, it wouldn't be a direct short. It, it shouldn't be. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying this is something. Okay. Add it to your list. Look at it. Yeah. We'll make a list for you. <laughs> and, and okay, okay, okay. For, for those that, for those of you that haven't, there there is forms back there, you know, to to jot down some ideas and everything. And um, we tried obviously to, to capture as much as we could right now. Um, but if you could take one of those with you and throw it at John tomorrow or next day or whatever else, he'll get them to us. You want to take one of those forms and spend a few minutes just to. Uh, 
you know, putting down some ideas. Just or if you, <laughs> right? If you if you work your way by in the next week or two weeks or whatever by another marina, you know, and and take a look, you know, uh, when you, if you if you elsewhere or whatever. I know out here we don't really, uh, you know, go to other marinas very often. I'm sure we'll go to Wharf. Driving by, yeah. you know, driving by, stop in and Get have a beer somewhere or whatever, and, and, and check them out. Uh, uh, again, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't think that there's any issue with, um, uh, you know, having, having the, uh, these are Bellingham docks. Do you guys have any trip hazard issues with the, uh, with the spigots being um, almost the same uh, height as a cleat in the middle of a, uh, it seems like people would be walking across here. One of the, one of the, one of the things things that stops that is that we we fake our roll your hose down around it. Yeah. Yes, and that and that makes it a big, you know, a big. Yeah. But when there's crowds, they'll crawl over everything. They don't care. They're trying. The only to time I fell in the water was I had the hose all the way laid out, and I stepped on the parallel. Roll and fell. Yeah. And that could happen with electrical cord. Making any wire <coughs> down a line uh, laid out like this, like this here as well. I mean, that's the way we have it now, and it seems, I haven't had to notice any problems. No, right, know. right. The only thing is, like the picture on the right shows that everybody's bowing in, so all your cords are right there. We don't have that. We've got guys that back in one day, and they'll, they'll pull and bow in the next day, so the cord will be running as a stern, because that's where the plug is. And, and so, just to, you know, have a picture of this is the way it should be, and ain't what it is here. Okay, I got you. But again, this pedestal being shared by two boats, that's fine. We need to, as we discussed, we'll look at options of maybe a trough or something where we can run the yes. uh, run electric the cord Boy, underneath it. If, if you could do something simple like that, that would be cool. Yeah. Maybe you could just take an inch or two off of the wood, lay it in there. In a groove on the top? In a groove, yeah. Because that's, be kind of the that's kind of what the guys do is they... they, they or they get those little uh, rubber steps that, you know, you put over ports. Mm -hmm. It seems like you do it for the fishing mm -hmm. fleet. Yeah, uh, on the docks, a lot of guys do that on the regular yeah. fishing yeah. docks. Right. That would be the easiest. Yeah, that's the easiest way. Surface mount. The only issue that we've had or I've seen on that is if I go throw a piece of carpet over somebody's cord and then somebody trips, who's liable? Well, it's not carpet. It's actually made to go over the uh, yeah. extension boards. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but guys are going to be more cheap. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a possibility. But then, we, like you say, we'd end up with uh, ununiformed stuff uh, all over the place. Well, maybe we and we put it. Yeah, we kicked put it. in the water and everything well, else. We supply it and move it down. Or whatever. It's, it's a standard, standard product. We're still going to have cords. It's, 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 it's a product. It's, it's a vendor item. Well, again, just the. Yeah. Uh, the most common way it's done now is we can run along the edge of the dock without having to cross uh, foot traffic. But uh, but we can work at something out. Uh, and again, a lot of it, uh, a lot of this discussion has been pushed largely because of uh, my thoughts regarding dock boxes. Uh, I've been I've been corrected. So you know it, it's not like. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's not like it's uh, you know anything's written in stone. We're getting your guys' feedback, and you're the end users, and that's what we want. So uh, we will relook at the dock boxes cool. and look at um, something like this. Having the center or having these pilings, you know, in the middle of every other well, that's a pain. You know, so you know with the you know with the metal um, guide as well around it. Correct. You know, so um, Correct. it's. It's better, it's cleaner to have yes. it just like it is here. Yes. Um, uh, and again, I, I, I would have just, just from my experience, I would have anticipated pushback for not having dock boxes, but if we don't want dock boxes, that's Well, like that's Porter great. says, it depends yeah. on what stock we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sporties may love having dock boxes. Yeah. I right. agree with John, Let's, though. Most, most of the things, every dock box I've ever opened up, most of the stuff is yeah. garbage. Yeah, I agree with and, that, And, and yeah. some of it, like she said, it's hazardous. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that sucks now too. And they get hit, you know. So the marine ends up replacing them a lot. In fact, in strong winds, the even when the ones that have the nice ones that have the heavy nice ones that have hydraulic arms, those arms come out of the you know with the winds, strong winds, those arms go weak <laughs> and then they get popped right out of the rivets. They're uh, they're definitely challenging. Chase your lid down the dock. <laughs> I 
That's going to be the water. Okay, Neil, do you have anything else? <laughs> no, that's it. Anybody else have questions or anything? Uh, please, I encourage you to grab a sheet. We're, we're only or shoot, shoot me an email. I got my cards back there as well. And we're basically no. only talking about H stock. Because I know we got all kinds of questions. Yeah, present we're only talking about H stock. Um, and then we wanted to, uh, more than anything, kind of just show the, the overall no, I, idea I, I of um, ADA, ADA access, where we do plan to put an ADA ramp coming down here and then having um, a walkway all along here, which we also think would help the uh, you know, yeah, commercial yeah. fishermen getting more and more um, so you know, you're more saying well, easier foot well, we got, yeah, that we H, took that, that way. H dock now is not going to the only yeah. access we're going to have is way back. At the no, 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 no. Right. There'll be this access, this the access. Down ramp now. The same down ramp. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they'll have. We have multiple. Access. Just to, yeah. So this originally envisioned a mean walk line all the way to the G. I mean all the way to H. But currently, I'm not showing a mean walk connecting to that. Because that, that would be the next, next question, because a lot yeah. of people, they walk that far, but they do want to walk to the end of the dock, they want to make a turn, and sometimes they go out and buy from the fish buyers or see what the guys are doing, unloading. I mean, that is a very interesting thing for people to do, is to come out there and see the guys unloading crab or salmon or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're excited about that. So, you know, there's going to have to, and that's the really difficult thing is, we were loading crab gear one year when the crowds were here, and it was like trying to load crab pots at Disneyland. So, so the difficulty is having that much people on the dock and still being safe, you know. And so that whole walkway that you're talking about, that was the original concept of that, is being able to have that many people on the pier. And so you're going to have to extend that or have some alternate route towards the end of the dock because the people are going to want to go there also. I think that's going to happen if we get this tiger grant. There... And get a bigger dock? Uh-huh. I understand. I'm just you're saying... Talking about, John, you're talking about the end of the pier out here. Right. Yeah. The, the walkway. So, presently, last I heard for the tiger grant that uh, were the old electrical... Right. Uh, Dooley's? Dooley's was right. going to 45 towards the work dock. Okay. To give the, the trucks that come down, so they can drive straight down, drive down this extra pier where the fuel dock is and then back in to the fish buyers and then pull straight out so they're not backing down and Ooh. so then that the, is one of the one of the plans that's one of the options is, and of course they're going to bring it all to you guys so is that, widening but that down ramp is what you're talking about putting the new ew dock that same down ramp is is that for that ew dock right uh that's what John's just saying, though, has nothing to do with here. He's talking about extending out <coughs> Johnson I Pier. I understand that. To drive out this way, then right. back up this way. Right. And then be able to it, it said, yeah, it made Johnson Pier wider at that end. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it, well, if you're going to extend it, then why do the extension on the fuel dock? Just run the fuel dock along the extension. Well, because this is first. So that's going to be, oh, okay. Right. And okay. the extension is going to go right up alongside the fuel dock. Correct. Yeah, like this. Okay. So this I mean, is all up in the air still. So it's gonna, you know, we have a lot of discussion with everyone. Right. Um, because and this may widen, may widen back in this way. No. I and may right. widen out this way as well. No. Um, you, you can talk about widening there. You've never tried to put a boat against that work dock in any kind of way. No, I'd better be done to the ocean side. I, I agree, I'm telling you, yeah. But to be sitting here talking about that, it's, it's like I said, you've never moved a boat there with any kind of weather. Yeah. I mean, I think h is a good start. I don't know about this, the new EW. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to talk about widening it on the inside. I think he know, just did. I say there's, there's, there's it's up in the air. We're not keep all our derelict boats that we destroyed. Correct. That angle right there. Right in the corner there? Yeah, so the, the trucks can make that turn. Oh, I understand that. I, yeah, I've talked to John about that before he passed away. Long yeah. Time. So I understand all that. I know what that's all about. What I'm talking about is extending from the work dock towards this EW dock, which now you're putting a whole new dock in between E dock and the work dock. And, and I, I don't know where you could put it. So, but that's just my concept. I mean, should I've only driven well, it's by. Well, like EW just goes to the north, not to the south. 
I, I truly understand that, but there's side ties there too. And then you put two side ties on the work dock, uh, yeah, and how are you going to move? And, and how are you going to get to Mallory's to unload? And how are you going to get some guy into the work dock to work? And, mm -hmm. and we've been working in there for years, John. No, I know. Yeah. I understood. I understand exactly what you're saying. The, you're talking about that boats letter. that are coming in here, right? Having I, trouble. Okay, I thought you were talking. I stack, thought you were talking stack, about. Stack, stack, I thought stack, you were talking about our proposed side stack, ties here having trouble. I couldn't stack, understand that. They'll stack yeah. seven boats in there yeah. to unload. Okay. If we got salmon or anything like that, they're, yeah. they're, or crab at the beginning of the season, I've seen. 12 boats in there and and all the, the the they'll pull in the e dock now you're saying there's only side ties there so where where's everybody you know on a typical mm -hmm. crab evening when everybody's alone how are you going to get everybody in there Because I come out of E dock on that side of the slip where where there's times with a little yeah, bit of that presently. That's E dock and ends, here. ends here. Okay, and so you're coming out going towards the work dock, and you're trying to make the turn to go out around the fish plants. That's okay, right. and that whole little area right there, there's about enough room to spin around a boat the way the existing E dock is now with some kind of weather, or with a little bit of breeze, <coughs> and and so now you're talking about cutting that down even more, and you're talking about, what about, like I said, when there's a couple guys tied up to eat up there? Yeah, that's uh, you just, you okay. know, you know, this whole thing might have been easier, because it says H-stop replacement. So EW is going to be 40 foot Why slips? Just yeah. concentrate on the so so you're, to, you're telling me that I'm going to have a conversation on those. Well, the next ask. one we can do would be the G-dop replacement. Just highlight G-dop. Right. I want to get some feedback on the overall thing, though. Right. Yeah. Because with an EW and a 40 foot slip there, you told me that I'm going to go somewhere else to do my business. You displace a lot of people off E dock on that. Okay. All right. Well, like John said, let's not focus on this right now. I appreciate your food feedback on it, though, because uh, it is valuable for, well, for us to know. That's like discussing the whole work up to that whole area. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Back to H dock and. Uh, I think we've, get, we've got a lot of very valuable information to go back to the, the drawing board with. We really appreciate everybody coming tonight. Any other questions that anybody might have right now? Just a comment. Yeah, um, shoot. I appreciate you had the meeting here at the harbor. I think it makes it a little yeah. easier for us access. And most of us are hopefully going to get back to real work April. So if these discussions continue, um, myself, I think 6 o'clock works out good because by 8, I'm... Mm -hmm. okay. Once we're, we're fishing, so um, if you can, I don't know if other people agree or not, but six o'clock on middle of the week kind of thing, uh, it at this harbor I think is it makes it a little easier for us to be able to attend. So like we did this time. Yeah, like you did. So we got time. we got lucky. Yeah. yeah you did good. <laughs> All right, good deal. And, and, and as long as you pull April, because you get into May, and if we're going sailing, yeah, and your stuff, you uh -huh. know. And if he's going to go squid fish, right. and, that's right. the best you can do. Right. I'm just saying that, that to try to pay attention and schedule the meeting. season first. I understand. <laughs> okay. Well, we want to thank the um, Half Moon Bay Yacht Club for letting us use this venue. Oh, for sure. And since we're going to hang out and clean everything up so good, they're going to let us use it again for next time. <laughs> All right. Go so grab some, grab some cookies and coffee and such, and a form there to. To throw a John or shoot me an email, please, and let me know uh, if you guys think of something else. Good deal. Thanks again for coming. Thank you for your